half an hour ago it was a beautiful cool brisk fall day and in the past half hour the clouds have come over swirling winds and rain some thunderstorms right here in Morgantown well John Sean just said this is a critical game and I think this weather just came as an omen and a reminder that this is a critical game and you better be ready to play it's a cloudy thing happening here today Mike very cool afternoon West Virginia comes in with a three and four overall record they're two and one of the Big East Virginia Tech five and two they're three and one of the Big East and there is Frank Beamer the head coach of the Hokies in his ninth season at Blacksburg team on a five game winning streak longest streak for him since he's been at Tech the only unequal thing is the is the win that's coach Nealon, but uh, it's going to be a windy day and it's going to be a factor. His 25th season as a collegiate head coach, number 16 here in Morgantown. West Virginia won the toss and have deferred, so they will kick off to start off. It's homecoming weekend, a sellout crowd of 63,500, but many of them heading for some shelter with this nasty, nasty rain. And you see last year's meeting. In Blacksburg, it was all Virginia Tech, although West Virginia leads the all-time series. You know, the interesting thing, as far as Coach Beamer and Coach Dealing is heard, they have met eight times, four and four. Now, I think the thing about it is this, is that uh, they're meeting the strength with the strength. They're going right after the offense. They're kicking off here right now, Mike. Brad Hackett will kick off. Dwayne Thomas, the deep man for the Virginia Tech Hokies. And the crowd is wet as they are. They're ready for this one to begin. A critical game for both teams as they try and get themselves in contention for a Big East championship and certainly for some bowl appearances. There's the alley oop kick down to the 20 yard line. It's a short kick at the 22 field. It spins and up to about the 36 yard line. Marcus Parker on the return. And let's take a look at the Virginia Tech offense. Struckin Miller is the quarterback. Dwayne Thomas, their leading rusher, has five touchdowns in his last five games. Meanwhile, the offensive line, Chris Malone, at left guard, his 43rd straight start. And we mentioned Druckin Miller, the junior. He has had a strong season. Had some ups and downs early, but is really starting to come on. This team has been pouring on the points the last couple of weeks. Balls on the 36-yard line. And they're going to a wide-open attack. Druckenmiller will start off in the shotgun. They spread out four wideouts. Druckenmiller fires. It's complete. Across midfield. All the way down to the 42-yard line. Van Washington on the stop. The tight end, Brian Jennings, on the reception. And there you see the defense. For West Virginia, Henry Slay, the sophomore. Second in tackles, second in sacks on this team. JT Thomas, leading tackler, always around the football. And in the secondary, Aaron Beasley, the All-America, had a huge game last year against Virginia Tech, had three interceptions, and hoping to do that again, even though West Virginia lost big. Elijah Longino is down on the field after that 22-yard pickup, the senior from Cleveland. And Druckenmiller with a nice pass to Jennings. The tight end has become a real threat. And Van Washington holding on for dear life. There you see Longino coming in across. And again, JT Thomas going over him. So he's a little shaken up on the play. I think that, uh, I think he's all right. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him as the foot went right into his belly. A lot of keys this afternoon for both teams, but there are also some musts. Coach Max Muss, what do we got, Coach? Well, I think Virginia Tech has got to establish the run. And from that, what they have to do is make sure they be dynamic and special teams because that's the way they've won all year. That's their formula, but they started out with wide out and the tight end coming right across. So in this weather, it kind of surprised me, but here they go. And Excellent field position. Well, Gino limping off on the first play. He's done an excellent job this year for the Mountaineers. Both teams have had to battle various injuries. West Virginia, John Browning is out once again with a knee injury as Don Nealon's had to deal with a lot of that. So already, excellent field position ball on the 42. Thomas and Edmonds are the setbacks for the Hokies. Kick out for Thomas. It's knocked out at about the 35-yard line. Mike Logan in on the tackle. 
And, and of course, we said some must for Virginia Tech, equally for West Virginia. They've got some important things they have to do. Well, I think when they go on offense, they're going to be successful in the quick passing game. And for doggone sure, they've got to improve their special teams, especially in punting, punt protection, and field goal and PAT protection. These are the things that have got to happen. Right now, they've got to settle down and play good defense because Virginia Tech has moved the football down the field. Second down and three after the seven-yard pickup from Thomas. Wayne Thomas again, close to a first down. Knocked in by a host of Mountaineers. JT Thomas among those in on the stop. Thomas, now the fourth leading rusher at Virginia Tech. He just gets better and better. And the whole, the whole Virginia Tech team is getting better and better, Mike. They're improving each and every week as they go out. And uh, now we got a critical play, third down and short yardage. Let's see who stacks up against who. I'm sure it's going to be a power game with these two coaches playing. Frank Beamer's team has been able to run the football. Thomas Edmonds, Ken Oxidine off the bench. Third and a little less than one. Edmonds has the first down without much problem. Charles Emanuel coming in to help out on the stop. J.B. Sweeney as well. And a first down again for Virginia Tech. Now again, Virginia Tech has mixed up the offense very, very well in this drive. There's three first downs for them in the first series, and uh, they're doing just exactly what they want to do. I think uh, West Virginia is settling down right now. West Virginia is a team this year that has struggled in the first half, more so offensively. Virginia Tech's offense has been in high gear the past couple of weeks. time Truckin Miller himself but really nowhere to go Bernard Russ on the tackle very apparent that they want to get outside with the option game to the weak side because West Virginia is really loaded up to the tight end side an interesting series going on here and an interesting strategy to see just exactly what they're going to be able to use but three first downs it's very apparent that Virginia Tech is using the right thing Mike now, Russ does not bite on the fake for second and nine. In Virginia Tech, the last two games, have scored 122 points. They've been lighting up the scoreboard. Truckin Miller looks, fires, deflected, and nearly picked off John Thornton on the deflection. One of the things that Frank has got to find out today, can he move against a good defense, which is what West Virginia is? Now here comes the pass rush, the thing that you need, and very, very dynamic. He's taking his time. He's looked. Now he throws off to his right. He has the hands up in the air to knock it down. That's the pressure. That's the knockdown. That's how you play good pass defense. Help everybody out on the team. They are number one in the Big East in quarterback sacks, and they put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. West Virginia's done it all season. And Druckenmiller facing a third and nine. On the play action, fires incomplete. Intended for Edmonds, and a fourth down coming up. Third down and long, and he went to the play action for protection purposes. It wasn't anything to do with the pattern. He just wanted to make sure he was protected. He had the guy open, but the guy uh, dropped the football on the thing, and great protection, great pressure. Adel Larson is coming on for the field goal attempt. Larson with a career long of 48. His long this year is 44, and this one is a 48-yarder. So this would match his career long. Again, the wind swirling pretty well here. And the rain's coming down. He started the season at 0 and 4, but come on strong ever since. This one's going to be up too short. So Virginia Tech moves the football on their first possession, but they come away empty as the Mountaineers' defense tightens up. A rainy afternoon in Morgantown. No score early in the first. Now you see on your screen John Thomas, who's the punter, but also the holder. And I think we're going to show you uh, John Thomas holding, who's improved dramatically. But here he spins the ball right into the kicker. But I don't think it's a factor in the play because there's so much wind on, that, on the play. And plus the distance, I think it was just a long way to go, and that's what caused the miss. This is the 48-yarder, Chad Johnston, to throw on first down for the sideline. David Sonder, no, incomplete. So the first play from scrimmage, both teams looking to throw the football. And there you see Robert Walker, who was not out there, to start off, Jimmy Gary started. Walker's been bothered by an ankle problem, so apparently in warm-ups, it hurt him a little more than they expected. But Jimmy Gary also excellent. Joe DeLong's got a long afternoon, tough matchup. He's going to go against Cornell Brown on that offensive line. 
second down and 10. Antoine Barber is the fullback. And there's Gary. And Coleman quickly racks him up. Chad Johnson numbers for the season. He's turned the ball over a little bit with the eight interceptions. The junior from Peterstown, West Virginia. But he's got a strong arm and a tough kid. You've got to match TDs with interceptions, and he's behind there, and that's one of the problems with West Virginia offensively. But they're going to attack just like they said they were. They attacked the outside with the quick passes. It was just the receiver slipping just as he was catching the football. Saunders split out to the near side. Vander pulled on the far side. Third down at 12. A lot of movement. Play action. Johnson under some pressure. Flag thrown on the play. And he fires it away. J.C. Price hot in pursuit. But again, a penalty marker down on the field. Our referee this afternoon, Al Hines. And this one going against the Mountaineers. The Virginia Tech defense, one of the best, not only in the Big East, but certainly in the nation. wet day you're going to have some problems with various technical equipment as Brian West comes on the punt. I think that uh, the key to the game is how they punt because it's been atrocious during the year. They're going to get real pressure from the Virginia Tech and they're in a terrible field position now and they're going to make sure to get this away downfield. They've got a break because the storm has blown over. And it's all West Virginia's favor right now. West had 11 punts last week against Syracuse and it's a real high one but short. Larry Green was back but this one way out of bounds. And Virginia Tech's going to have some excellent field position on another poor punt from West. He's had some boomers, but he struggled with consistency. Well, that certainly is one of the inconsistent ones and hurt them terribly. 21-yard punt. Virginia Tech will start off with excellent field position. Biggie Studio. Penn State off to a quick start this afternoon. They've not lost three straight at home in almost 30 years. And they went 72 yards and 10 plays on their opening drive. Curtis Innes fights his way into the end zone from the seven. Penn State takes a 7-0 lead over Indiana in the first quarter. Back to the first quarter and Morgantown and Mike and Dick. Thank you, John. As we're at least had temporary restraining from the, from the rain. In fact, the sun a little bit down the road, but a lot of clouds on a cool, brisk afternoon. And there you see Brian West, that last putt, by the way, just... 14 yards as they marked it now at the 43-yard line of West Virginia. We said they had to improve in this area, and they certainly have it. Virginia Tech's going to get 43 yards to go, and that is too tough on the West Virginia defense. Too much pressure by the special teams, Mike. First and 10 for the Hokies. Wayne Thomas able to scamper for a couple of yards. JT Thomas on the tackle. Henry Slay, number 78 for West Virginia. I don't know. Well, you know, kanadi has got to make sure he brings him down, just hugs him a little bit, brings him down to the turf. But excellent pressure, and that makes it very difficult for an inside run to take place because he makes him bend anywhere he wants him to bend. Two-yard pickup on that last and second and eight. Again, Thomas has a big hole, and he's got the first down to the 32-yard line. Jamie Sweeney and Thomas on the stop. But a strong run from Dwayne Thomas. Now these are linemen and the fullbacks delight when they can lead to and take on linebackers and just plow right into the people and move the chains. And here they are down to the 32-yard line, so two plays, 11 yards, and they're moving down in the, inside the 25, which is dangerous for West Virginia. Thomas, the team's leading rusher. He's also second in rushing TDs in the Big East. One of those is able to find the end zone. He gets the call again, wrapped up. Charles Emanuel among those on the stop. Thomas the senior out of Fort Myers. And there you see number four all-time Cyrus Lawrence who played late 70s early 80s the all-time leading rusher but Dwayne Thomas moving up the charts. And you're talking when Emanuel's got his nose up there in that tight defense you got to be careful for the play action because he's playing the run real tough. Second and ten. Drop him down. He tries to fire it away. John Thornton again. 
Thornton, who's filling in for Browning, has done a magnificent job while Browning recovers from knee problems. The only difference, in my opinion, is the, the greatness, but John is also a real good football player, and they lose some depth. But John has played well all year. With Browning out, he's gotten the opportunity, has three quarterback sacks, and puts a lot of pressure. That's where you can have the knee problems yep. a little bit the way that goes. He's got to uh, get to relax a little bit, go down when they hit him, take the take the ball a little bit easy, he's trying to fight it. Third down and ten. Drucker Miller go off way to Thomas breaks the tackle, but short of the first down as he's brought down by Bernard Russ. Did a nice job eluding the first one. Again, you're talking about excellent call. The, offensively trying to get mix it up move the draw they got a real good field goal position now and Lasso will get another chance to get three points on the board a wonderful wonderful defense by West Virginia they've been right in the trouble right looking right down their throat they've been able to uh, stop him for touchdowns and make him try to kick field goals so that Larson on once again forty three yard field goal again he missed a forty eight yard of a four this one has the distance, and it's good. So lot, Larson redeems himself. A lot less wind that time. It's really settled down here. It's starting to be a nice day. We had about a half hour of a bad thunderstorm. Otherwise, it's been an excellent football day, and you got it right now. Virginia Tech gets on the board first as they look for their sixth straight victory. Virginia Tech, courtesy of the 43-yard field goal from Adel Larson, takes the 3-0 lead. West Virginia chance now to go back on offense. They got shut out last week against Syracuse. And Coach Don Leland knows that he'll have to pass a little bit today, but he's not going to get carried away. Well, we're going to try to throw it. There's no question there. They're daring us to throw it, so we're going to try to throw it a little bit. But uh, I still have that basic philosophy, Mac, that you can't beat anybody throwing 50, 60 passes. We have to buckle it up, and uh, we have to block those ends and block those tackles and get after them and run up in there and uh, keep them honest because I think if it becomes just nothing but a passing game, we're in big trouble. He's absolutely right. That's not their mode, but they are going to throw it. You will see it on the first series, I think. Ed Larson is now one for two in field goals, and now he's kicking off. And what we said earlier in the game, West Virginia has got to establish himself with big plays on special teams. They've got a chance right now by returning this kickoff. So the best of the Big East in kickoff returns are Sean Vanderpool. The main reason for that, he's back along with Sean Foreman. Larson to kick off. The rain has stopped and the wind has died down. Vanderpool at his own two. <laughs> out of bounds at about the 19. <clears throat> Keon Carpenter able to run him out. 17-yard return for Vanderpool. And there's the defensive line, the starters for Tech. J.C. Price having one of the best seasons ever for a Virginia Tech defensive lineman. Myron Newsom, the Big East Defensive Player of the Week, had a spectacular game against Rutgers last week. Strong linebacking crew. And William Yarbrough, the interception le leader for this team both last year, and he's got the lead this year as well. I think the corners are the ones that uh, West Virginia thinks they can go after a little bit. Lauren Johnson, Larry Green, let's see what happens. Johnson again, throws for the corners, incomplete. Vanderpool could not hold on. That's what you said that they wanted to do right from the get-go. So Johnson misfiring on his first three, although that one's certainly catchable. Well, I think, again, you've got to watch... Uh, Vanderpool here, he's got to turn his hands back the other way to make it a little bit easier on himself. Get those the thumbs together, and I think he could have caught that a little bit more. He didn't have a good kickoff return. He's got to get into the rhythm a little bit more because he's a big play man for West Virginia. He was quiet last week against Syracuse. The entire offense was, as we have more penalty flags. This one will go against the Mountaineers. There you see the little motion ahead just popping. Buddy Hager with the movement. When you see Virginia Tech playing defense, you see nervous offensive linemen because they attack so much and it's such a concern to anybody that plays against them. It's a tremendously intimidating defense. That's what causes so many cadence problems. Second and 15. Jimmy Gary on a bit of a draw. 
Brittany, Nick George, Del Rico, and Brandon Simonis are right there. He gets not even back to the original line of scrimmage. Del Rico, the defensive captain, the senior is their leading tackler. You know, you talk about the linemen, linebackers in the uh, in the Big East, and here's a perfect example of how to play, how he stands up and just takes them on. And West Virginia cannot play first and 15 and second and 15 and expect to win on offense, especially with this field position. They can't take any chances. Good camera work. Watching Del Rico in action. He had some big games against West Virginia the past two years. Further down and long. Johnson under pressure, flushed out. Fires downfield, incomplete. And a fourth down is coming up. Lever Purnell, the tight end, the intended receiver, it appeared, but he overthrew him, although Saunders was also in the vicinity. Now, the West Virginia stands and the fans have got to stay with their football team just a little bit longer. They're in tough shape. And Chad is just getting rid of the football so they don't get in any more trouble on these kind of things. And here's one of your musts for West Virginia, the punting game. They have struggled. West's first punt was only 14 yards, and he's way back near his own goal line now. They need a big booming punt from him. You know, and, and Brian is just about, uh, you know, he just can't he just can't think of what he's doing so much. He really is mentally out of it. He's so scared to death. He's just got to get up there and boom it with the great ability that he has. Almost blocked again. A low kick. Larry Green going to be going to get a great roll out of it. Now. And that's exactly what he needed. Wasn't a thing of beauty, but the end result is absolutely perfect for West Virginia. The result makes it beautiful, Mike. 55 <laughs> yarder yes, right. for Brian West to the yes. junior. That's the kind of breaks that they need from mistakes. Good things happen. And he even had to mishandle a snap that wasn't perfect as well to well, get it off. Let's take a look. I think that's to his credit. He stayed right down on it, looked the ball right into his hands, relaxed, scooped up nice and short stop, then get up without looking anywhere and just booted away. That's that's a tremendous credit to him. Now you got to build on that with Brian, make him feel better about himself. Then he'll be a better punter. Marcus Parker and Ken Oxendine have come into the game in the backfield. This is a very deep team in terms of running backs. Virginia Tech Oxendine, a super player. He gets the call and quickly hit maybe a yard or two. Bernard Russ, who's had a strong first quarter, in on the stop. Now the football purist has got to love watching West Virginia play football because they will come after you. Just a couple of weeks ago, Russ was the Big East player of the week. So it's not a one-time thing. He's doing it week in and week out. It's his first year with West Virginia. Junior college transfer from Utica, New York. Second and six. Oxenon able to spread out a little bit. Chucka Miller play action, going deep for Brian Still. Incomplete, just off the fingertips. Beasley right there on the coverage. Although he certainly had a step on Beasley. Now again, with the play action, with the great run, they're going to attack him deep, either working on the safeties with the post cut or with the streaks with Brian Still. Uh, it's an excellent football play, just off his fingertips. That's the way Brian should lay out. If they keep doing that, they'll hit one of the big plays, and they need those. They've had a lot of them. Today. Oh, yeah. Third and six. Drucker Miller is going to run. He makes a tackle, and he's got the first down. Van Washington missed him, and they'll move the chains. Now, that is a great play by the quarterback, because he's telling people, I'm giving up my body. I'm going after the first down. Move the chains. You can see the excitement over there on the Virginia Tech bench. That's how everybody gets into the game. This is not what he's known for. He's not uh, very quick, but well, this he, time does a nice job. See, he's a big, strong man, and he can take those hits, and that's why he's attractive to everybody, and he leads his team well. A great size. It's 6'4", 222 pounds. So another first down. This time straight up the middle and absolutely nowhere to go. Bernard Russ in on the tackle, Thornton there. Right now, let's go to our Big East studios once again for an update. And John Sanders. Thank you very much. We take you to Illinois, and it's the Fighting Illini on the move. Fourth down and goal from the one. On the bootleg, Scott Weaver into the end zone. An early lead for Illinois over Northwestern, 7 to nothing. Illinois trying to make it three straight over the Wildcats. Let's go back to Mountaineer Field. Thank you, John. What a year Northwestern has had. Tough road contest this afternoon. Tough one for Virginia Tech. 
second and nine out of the shotgun. Oxidine out of the backfield. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets up near midfield. Rustin Thomas in on the stop. Jay Haygood made a key block on that play. This is one of the prettiest plays in football where you got a combination. Watch this tackle pulling out here. The great timing on the play. Just pulling, pushing the guy back on a trap block and Oxide timing it and taking it down the football field. Great mix up. Third and two, third and three. Oxendine just a sophomore. He'll take over when Thomas leaves next year. Rucker Miller has some time. Fires. Incomplete intended for Bryant still. Excellent coverage from one of the best in the nation, Aaron Beasley, the senior All-America. Boy, does he challenge receivers. He challenges. Not a lot of quarterbacks want to throw his way. Not in short yarded situations. They better throw it deep if they're going to. He's right there putting the pressure right on. That's perfect timing. You must commend the West Virginia defense with what they've done so far to, to just give up three points with the field position they've had to work with. John Thomas, third in the Big East in punting. Vanderpool is back. And it's blocked. West Virginia pounces on it at midfield. Sean Foreman with the block. And a big play by the special teams of the Mountaineers. Make big plays in special teams. We said the team that makes the big plays in special teams today could win this football game. Now, tremendous field position for the first time today by, by West Virginia. Foreman right there had no problems getting through. That's the second time this year that Thomas has had a punt block. I think that Thomas has got to handle the ball and see it in. And Jimmy Gary is gang tackled. Coleman and Price get him before he has a chance to breathe, and he's thrown for a big loss. What happens there? Virginia Tech answers a big play with a big play. Don't give them any life. Don't let them get excited. Make second down and long. And Virginia Tech answered that uh, tremendously from a defensive standpoint. Especially when you get the crowd all of a sudden pumped up as the sun has come back out here in Morgantown. We've had gone from a beautiful day early to a, just an ugly one, and now it's gorgeous again. And a homecoming crowd, full stadium. Now they've got to get behind that football team just a little bit more. Four-yard loss on that play, so second and 14. Three receivers in the game now for the Mountaineers. Johnson looks downfield, fires, and it's complete. Not they say he dropped it. Oh no. Alexander. Oh no. He does not like the call. Oh no, the guy behind makes the call. He doesn't see it. Let's take a look at that again from replay. Tony Alexander still arguing. Now we'll be able to see it right at the end of the play. That's the advantage of television. Ah. Looks like it looked like he juggled it and it hit the ground as he was coming down. Never had possession, juggled. Great call by the officials. Amazing. Johnston now 0 for 5. And he's got a third and 14 and three wide receivers. Under pressure, and he's sacked. Cornell Brown, the leading sack man on Virginia Tech, his seventh sack of the season. Now again. Virginia Tech makes the big play when they have to. They cause the sack, but it's third down and 14. Chad Johnson very wisely puts the ball down. Now they've got a chance to punt, put Virginia Tech in the hole, and they're still playing good, decent football field position-wise. If the crowd will just stay with them and give them a chance. Brian West, another very poor kick, and he is really, really struggling. And here's it from the homecoming crowd. Tech will have excellent field position again. Just a 20-yard kick. So the Hokies leading 3-0, just under four minutes remaining. In this opening quarter, will start at their own 43-yard line. They can't continue to put the pressure on the West Virginia defense like this, and it's the kicking game that's doing, and Poor Brian West is so involved mentally, his physical skills can't take it over. It's a very frustrating thing for everybody on the West Virginia team. Tucker Miller out of the shotgun. Two wide outs and out to the far side. 
Both defenses have been strong early. Miller looks downfield. Bust down in the pocket. He's got a lot of room to go. And he runs out of bounds. JT Thomas finally runs him out, but they've got the first down and more all the way down to the 41-yard line. And now let's take a look at our out-of-town scores brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Boston College hoping to get on track later on. A lot of big games throughout the nation. I think Brook and Miller, that was the uh, that was the biggest uh, one he had all day. He slipped on the as he went out of bounds. For a guy that can't run, he's running okay. Yes, he is. That's, that's something that they can't afford to do, leave him get out of the pocket. Dwayne Thomas. Another strong game. Second effort as well as the running game is working. Van Washington on the tackle. Now power, straight power football. Tremendous thing by the offensive line and the fullback leading them. And then Thomas does the thing that excites his own football team, breaks tackles, pushes, and makes it a second down and one call coming into the thing, which is a tremendous call from an offensive standpoint. Makes it easy. Thomas came in the game averaging just under four and a half yards per carry. And again, he scored in his last five games. Second down and one after that nine-yard pickup. The Hokies mixing it up offensively. Miller going for the end zone. Again, he overthrows Cornelius White, the intended receiver. All he had to do was put just a little bit more air under it. He put just too much direct on the thing. Great call, great pump, and uh, was a, a nice time to do it with a second and one. Now he puts pressure on himself. Just a little bit more higher up in the air, I think. Uh, the receiver just couldn't get under it. White had a couple of steps, and you know he's mad at himself. Now they got to go back and get the first down in this situation right here to keep the drive going. Otherwise, they're going to give the renewed life to West Virginia. Not great numbers early for Druckenmiller, but he's got a third and one. Quick inside to Edmonds. They're giving it to him. First down. So no hurt on the incomplete. So they moved the chains. Got a whole new series now to move it in. Thomas in on the stop. They've got this uh, line completely sealed off so the back can run for the positive yardage in the first down. And Jim Drunken Miller's mixing the plays up, automatically, tremendously. And as you said, with the way West Virginia's playing right now, the defense, you can't keep them on the field all that much. Eventually, a big play is going to happen as total yards just dominated by Virginia Tech. They've got a first down. Four wide receivers in the game. Sending over the run. And Thomas, as the penalty marker is thrown, spins for maybe five yards. Bernard Russ once again there on the tackle, but he's got a penalty. The uh, penalty is the thing that can help and save West Virginia and hurt uh, Virginia Tech. And it's very obvious the way they're walking back against it. It's against them. On a first down, you don't hold. You don't need to hold in that situation because you get many downs, especially down in here. Now you put yourself in, in problems that you shouldn't have, so it becomes a first and 20 situation. And uh, they don't need to overcome. Now watch what uh, Jim Druckenmiller does. Watch him up at the line of scrimmage, how well he handles things and checks off. Uh, doing a great job moving the team and not making any mistakes. And that's the key to this thing. Ahead three to nothing in the first quarter. Virginia Tech second in the Big East in penalty yards per game. They're being penalized over 46 yards a game. So they've had their problems up and down in that area. Uh, they've got a first and 20. Again, Druckenmiller with four wide receivers. Here comes the blitz. Druckenmiller pops, and it's complete Thomas out of the backfield, but another flag on the play. He's run out of bounds at about the 34 by Van Washington. Uh, Check West that Jermaine Virginia, Holmes on that reception. West Virginia had a, a zone pressure blitz on, and I think they stepped across the line of scrimmage ever so slightly, and probably that's what the official is calling right there. That's what they get him for. L. Hines of the Big East is an excellent referee. And I don't endorse very many of them. Is <laughs> any should correct? Big East official. Some, we've seen great, some great, great calls. Job. Yes, they do. Very do tough job. calls. And so often you look at the replay and say, you know, son of a gun was right. Again, because of some of the uh, rainstorm problems earlier, our uh, referees Mike having some uh, difficulty. Hopefully we'll get that. Attended to a little bit earlier. 
sure that people can see from the shadows and everything on TV that uh, this is again a magnificent day for football in Morgantown, West Virginia. Tucker Miller to White. The reception is good at about the 31. Back to the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be second at about, say, 10 or 11. Cornelius White, one of the talented wide receivers. You notice that going into the no huddle offense and keeping the West Virginia team from any substitutions. Uh, so they're really got the wide outs in there and lock them into three linebacker coverage and working one on one on, on those people. Throwing the ball a lot. Again, both these teams are so good defending the run. Chuck and Miller. Quick throw. Jermaine Holmes had it and dropped it. And it's going to be a third and ten coming up. Again, it's 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 an incomplete pass, but it's not Holmes that caused it. Just a very very poor throw here by Jim Drunken Miller. When you have to go back from where you came to make a catch, it makes it very difficult. Just too hard to catch. He made a great effort. Third down and ten. Well, the numbers for Drunken Miller so far. He's had a couple of long passes that if he just a little shorter, they would have had two different touchdowns. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. This is when it hurts to be away from home. Virginia Tech crowds back in on a third down and long. Most of them back in their seats after the rain has stopped. Sellout crowd. Brian Edmonds on a counterplay. He's got the first down and more. Dragged down. Van Washington tripped him up. And Sean Foreman also there to stop. But a beautiful play from Brian Edmonds. Edmonds, the junior. It's a checkoff by Jim Drunken Miller. They go to a uh, one linebacker, two, a six defensive back defense, and uh, that's exactly what they do. They run the ball at those little line, little defensive backs, and run right over them for a first down. Edmonds has his big games in Big East play. Always seems to gear up for conference opponents. And a first down. Ball down to the 15. Thomas hit after a couple of yards, but no more. And right now, let's get another update from our Big East studios and John Sanders. We take you to Columbus, seventh-ranked Ohio State against number 25, Iowa. This is Bobby Hoying hitting Terry Glenn, who had scored five touchdowns in the last three games, did not break that one. Eddie George, though, scores from the five. The Buckeyes have a 7-0 lead. Back to Morgantown. Thank you, John. So explosive, the Buckeyes. 3 to nothing ball game here, and Virginia Tech ahead and threatening again from the 14-yard line. Second and eight. Edmonds gets the carry. Gets down to about the eight. Bernard Russ in on another tackle. He has been so active, but not before Edmonds gets close to another first down. Now you're starting to see some leakage in the West Virginia front. They've got to gear it up, keep them out of the end zone this time, and uh, they're going to be fine. But it's a lot of pressure on them because they've been playing defense the whole first quarter. They've been out there a long time. They need a sustained drive on their offense. But Bernard Russ showing no signs of tiring. Virginia Tech with the lead as the first quarter is complete. I'm John Sanders back in the Big East studio once again. Let's go back to State College, Pennsylvania. The Nittany Lions of Penn State trying to avoid losing three in a row for the first time in 30 years. And this is Chris Ditto just into the game for Indiana. The pass deflected and picked off by Aaron Collins. He takes it defensively for Penn State all the way to the end zone. An 80-yard strike. The Nittany Lions adding to their first half lead. Now up 14 to nothing at Indiana, playing Indiana at Penn State. And from Penn State, we take you back to the second quarter of our Big East Game of the Week. It's the Hokies and the Ears. Let's go back to Mike and Dick. Thank you, John Sanders. It has turned again into a beautiful day. Virginia Tech leading 3-0. This is a team that's won five in a row. They open up the season losing two straight, but Frank Beamer says they did not panic. Well, we thought at that time we were a good football team. We just had to play better, and uh, I give the credit to our coaches and players. I think we got a lot of maturity and a lot of character. Uh, we came back and we played better, and, and we're on a pretty good roll right now. I think the last couple of ball games, we've been the most complete football team, all elements of the game uh, coming together the best we've been all year. You know, I agree 100% with Frank. It's amazing how well balanced they are in every phase of the game. The biggest play in the game so far is coming up right now, Mike. Third down. A lot of linebackers in here for a short yard of defense. They stop from here and make them go for a field goal. It gets them no more life. Third and three from the West Virginia eight-yard line. Edmonds and Thomas for the setbacks. 
Wayne Thomas trying to get outside. He does. And an easy score. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. You know, again, it looks like an easy score, but what happens is that Dwayne Thomas takes the route to the outside. It's not a designed football play to bounce out, but he had to bounce out because everybody stayed inside. What, we didn't get good contain on the play by West Virginia, and, and Virginia Tech is able to take it in. Critical play in the game. Puts a score at 9 nothing, possibly 10, and uh, it makes him ride real well from every piece of field position they had the first quarter. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season as Larson on for the extra point. Also his 23rd career touchdown at Virginia Tech. And the Hokies now in the opening seconds of the second quarter have a 10-0 lead. Thomas and Virginia Tech celebrating. They're on a five-game winning streak and looking for more. Virginia Tech running back Dwayne Thomas so far spoiling the homecoming afternoon for the West Virginia fans as his touchdown run gives it a 10 nothing lead. I think again you see that he's trying to run inside and what happens on the play that there's no hold in the inside. Nobody contains the football play. And he just continues to bounce and bounce right outside. What you have to say there is an excellent run by Dwayne Thomas. And that's why he is uh, such a, well, he, I guess he's leading everything that they ever had at Virginia Tech in terms of the modern era. There's your scoring drive. They've had excellent field position most of the first half. That's uh, a, that's a Virginia Tech scoring drive right there. Ten plays, almost four minutes. Adam Larson on to kick off. Sean Foreman to the right. Uh, Sean Vanderbilt to the left. Foreman, of course, blocked that punt earlier. Now to make this a ball game, West Virginia must answer. We have to see more out of Vanderpool in the return kick here now and really put it to it. Get some field position and then see what West Virginia can do from there. Great kick. Larson, beautiful boot. And nowhere to go for Vanderpool, so the Mountaineers will take over at their own 20. They have not gotten anything done offensively. Look at the total yards, minus 13. That's, uh, and that kickoff by Larson makes a tremendous difference. Now they've got 80 yards to go. Three drives for West Virginia, three plays and out on all three drives. The big key was the third drive when they had the ball on the 50-yard line, three plays and out. That's what you have to take advantage because it's a 31 to 19 and the 20, which is 80 and 81 yards to go like they have here. These are tough things, but when you had it on the 50 like they did, they should have made more out of it. So first and 10 for Chad Johnson. <laughs> Trying to establish some offense. Johnson on a quick drop. Now fires incomplete. Vanderpool, the intended receiver. Let's go back to our Big E Studios. Another update with John Sanders. Mike, thank you very much. South Carolina is setting up for a field goal here, but Leonard Little blocks it, and it goes right into the hands of Tyrone Hines. Nothing but green in front of him. He will romp 91 yards to the end zone. The Volunteers looking for their fifth consecutive victory. Ranked number five. They get on the scoreboard first. Thanks to the block, 7 to nothing. Let's go back to Morgantown and see if the year's offense can warm up. Gentlemen? Thank you, John. Certainly, Don Nealon wants the offense to warm up. As Johnson warms up with a nice throw to Vanderpool that time across the 30-yard line. Good for first down and a bit of a sarcastic cheer from the Mountaineer fans. See, they're all reading a little bit too much into this thing. And they've got to get back with the football team. Vanderpool, that's now he got his hands in the correct made. Nice catch, play action pass, first down for them. But you're running against an outstanding Virginia Tech defense. And that makes it very, very tough. And they're playing very disciplined and know what they're doing today. You see Virginia Tech able to move the chains quite a bit. That's the initial first down of the game for West Virginia. And movement on the offensive line for the Mountaineers. So they'll bring it back five yards. I mentioned before, and I want to mention again, when you get the pressure that Virginia Tech puts on you, it makes a lot of offensive linemen nervous and and believe me, it, uh, the cadence, the long cadence like that hurts. I think that West Virginia is going to have to go back to a quick one and get it moving faster. Tom Habick, a little nervous on that one. So a first and 15. And the Mountaineers did not score last week against the Syracuse team that played as well as it can possibly play defensively. Three wide receivers in the game for the Mountaineers. of scrimmages can't Troy Barber Cornell Brown on the tackle he's already got a sack and he's one of the very best in Virginia Tech history of that position 
again, faking pressure, putting pressure on. They put a tremendous load on any offense, and they, as they've done all year, and they're dominating this football game and really hurting the numbers are just amazing. I think something like over 130 to a minus yardage for West Virginia. So you can't win football games or even stay in them this way. They've got to sharpen up. Here. They call him the best pass rusher in Texas, Bruce Smith. That's quite a compliment. There's nobody better than Bruce Smith. Reggie White, probably the only one that came for Second and 17 on the blitz. Johnson has it tipped. Oh. Intercepted. Larry Green. No one's in front of him. Touchdown, Hokies. Green off the deflection. Myron Newsom appeared to get a piece of it. And a 38 yard return for the touchdown. Now, again, Chad has got to take the responsibility for this. He gets real good pressure, stands right up in there, throws the football, but right at a linebacker that's able to top it up in the air. And the old tip drill, and Larry Green takes the end zone. They're working on him, but. And Newsom, the defensive player of the week last year, or last week, I should say, in the great game against Rutgers, comes up with a big play here. And we said that he would be one of the people that made the big plays, and he certainly did. You know, and Larry Green emerged as one of the other people that has to make him run in for touchdown. Larson connects. Larry Green had an interception last week against Rutgers, and that is third of the season. He returns it 38 yards for the touchdown, and here early second quarter, Virginia Tech comfortably in front. Studio one more time. Before we take you back to Morgantown, let's take you to University Park, Pennsylvania. Indiana playing a ranked team for the third straight week, and it is costing them. These are the Penn State Nittany Lions on the move. Stephen Pitts from the eight-yard line into the end zone. It's all Penn State at this point. 21-0 over Indiana. Back to Morgantown, where Tech has a 17-0 game. Mike? Thank you, John. It is all Virginia Tech here as well. Early second quarter, Larry Green returns an interception, 38 yards for touchdown. They've had two scores early here in the second quarter. As Adam Larson once again will kick off. In under two minutes, really, they've had uh, two scores. Complete domination, as you see by the numbers. The last kick was right out of the end zone. And uh, he's got the win with him again. And, you know, when you get ahead 17 nothing, everything gets loose. Watch the kick. Vanderpool and Foreman are back. And Vanderpool once again has no choice. As West Virginia will start off at their own 20. Let's take a look once again at the defensive score for the Hokies. Johnson had it deflected. Myron Newsom with a big play. He's uh, eyeing the receiver all the way. Didn't see Newsom in the, in, get into the pattern, but threw it right at him. Tipped it up. The old tip drill. Larry Green takes it. 38 yards for a touchdown. Extra point. 17 to nothing. The ball comes out to the 20 and uh, the West Virginia offense has got to get something moving here now because it's down 17 nothing and you can't do that against a great defense like Virginia Tech and expect to win. Green the junior out of Fort St. Lucie second straight week with the interception. First and ten for the Mountaineers the homecoming crowd desperately wants some movement on offense. Johnson play fake complete Tony Alexander has it has some room gets up to the 35. Lauren Johnson tripped him up. You know, the same football play to attract the linebacker inside, then put the pressure on the defensive back, play action pass, then throw it outside to the corner. 16 yard pickup. That's the two uh, outstanding plays they've had on offense. Is this the same play right here? Different receiver, same play. Johnson now two of nine throwing the football. Up the middle. It's Gary. Nowhere to go. George Del Rico meets him at about the 35 yard line and knocks him back. West Virginia chose to run right into that seven man front. And they say if the fumble came before the whistle, it appeared the play was dead. Oh boy. There's Lauren Johnson and J.C. Price coming up. Now, this is a great hit. He must have done it right on the hit because I thought he was just standing there. I, we have to see the thing come out. But, you know, you talk about big plays. There's another man you mentioned right there, J.C. Price. He just took it right out of his hands. And the whistle did come afterwards. J.C. Price, who is having one of the best years for a tech lineman in a long time, comes up with another big play. 
But, but now they say the whistle came down. This is very confusing. I apologize. I thought the whistle had blown. It appeared that he took it away after. We're going to have to take a look at that again as Johnston has it. Fires complete to Saunders at about the 43. Mike, again, you can see very quickly there was 17 nothing. That's one of the big plays of the game where they reverse that call and give it back to West Virginia because that would have been a dynamite blowout right there if they had a chance with the field position. Yeah, my apologies for, uh, for confusing you out there, but they were signaling it was text ball and then change it. We're going to take a look at the replay in just a minute. It looked like maybe his knee was down. Johnson takes it himself. He's got the first down and more down to the 42. George Del Rico on the tackle. Let's go back to our Big East studios. John Sanders, another update. Mike, we go west on I-70 to Columbus. Ohio State's Bobby Hoying looking for Terry Glenn. The defender will slip and fall. He's on his way 39 yards to the end zone for the touchdown. His sixth TD reception in the last four games. Ohio State out 14-0. Back to Morgantown. Well, we had an option to the weak side, which is uh, something they should do like uh, Virginia Tech is doing offensively and excited the crowd because Chad Johnson got excited in the thing. They've moved the football all the way down to the plus side of the football field with a power attack. So another first down and more whistles and penalty markers. By the way, we received word that on that J.C. Price taking the ball away that the whistle had blown. And when you look at the replay again that second time, it appeared that his knee was down. I think really the official signaled the ball going the other way a little bit too soon. They came in and conferred, said the whistle had blown, and gave it back to West Virginia, which apparently looks like the right call as you looked at it on the replay, Mike. There's nothing wrong with changing the call. The main thing you want to do is get the right one, there even if go. it takes a little bit. There you go. I think you, what you want is to make sure that the players play the game and we don't make any mistakes outside as far as officials are concerned. So off the movement and the penalty of first and 15 now for the Mountaineers. They trail 17-0 early in the second quarter. Johnson looking downfield, goes short, incomplete. Intended for Alexander. He's had some pressure on him again. Well, uh, again, he had the right receiver he went to, but the linebacker went out and took the play away, and Chad Johnson just threw the dirt to make sure he didn't have an interception. The problem comes is the fans think he had a bad pass again and puts added pressure on the whole offense. But you can't continue. That's the third, first at 15, first at 20 they've had. Very, very tough on an offense, and they're making their own mistakes. I think intimidation by the Virginia Tech defense is what causes a lot of the fight. It has been a struggle for Johnson so far this afternoon, but he is in Virginia Tech territory on second and 15. Another play fake under pressure gets it out to Jimmy Gary. Gary's got some blockers. And Gary spins all the way up close to the first down. A great second effort from Jimmy Gary. Lauren Johnson finally got him. You know, that's what's great about football. The fans in the stands can see, even though down 17 to nothing, Gary sparks some life. Chad Johnson did just before. Those are the things that keep everybody going in the football game. We're not giving up here yet, but we're going to make sure that we try to do the best we can. That's West Virginia talking. But when you're operating against a team like Virginia Tech and the great defense they have, it's very tough to go 80 yards, and they've already accomplished about, about uh, 50 of them at least. And they are just short, as you see Gary, the senior from Florida, has done a great job backing up. He's getting a lot of action. Robert Walker out with an ankle injury. We have not seen him yet this afternoon. And this one's so close. Good bloodlines in Gary's family. Cleveland Gary, of course, in the NFL, a cousin of Jimmy Gary. Short yardage. One of the great power plays of football. Gets a power offense and a power defense. And that's exactly what you're going to see now. West Virginia must move the change in this situation. Looked like about six inches for this third down play for West Virginia. What a big play it is. They trail 17 nothing. The need to get the offense in gear. Barber, the fullback, has the first down. No better guy to go to on this team than Cantroy yeah. Barber. Yeah. When you need a first down, number 46 can answer. 
was very disciplined there. They had a chance for a big play outside. Just wanted to move the change, stayed in, pushed it down. You know, you, he's an outstanding fullback and, and the blocks and does everything that you're going to see a lot of him in, in the future, I'm positive. Rated one of the high football drafts in the country. Big and strong and 6'3", 245. Oh, yeah. Father Rudy played the NFL with Miami and Kansas City. Speaking of good bloodlines. Yeah, you talk about lineage. So another first down for the Mountaineers. Finally moving the football offensively. And Barber able to get four or five yards on that first down play. Cornell Brown gets in on the tackle. Now West Virginia is doing what Virginia Tech was doing before. Mixing the plays up. Quick count. Long count. And moving the football on first down. And right on the quick count. And surprised Virginia Tech a little bit. And just a shoestring tackle saved that from being a, another first down. This is the eighth play of the drive. Easily their best drive of the first half. Very easily. They've been three and out every other time. And of course, the interception return for the touchdown. Dustin fires incomplete. Vanderpool a little bit over his head. Simonis on the coverage. I think that's uh, what you have to say. Simonis is the one that made the play because now he made Chad throw over the top of him to get the play in. And Excellent defense on the play action play to be able to run off and not play the run here. Vanderpool from Long Island. He's their main wide receiver threat. But no chance of that one. Matt McCulty has checked in. There's a wide out for West Virginia on a third and six. It's going to be a pass because they got all of their real powerful running supporters in there. Johnson throws incomplete intended for David Saunders. Larry Green right there on the coverage is Cornell Brown. Here's Johnson a little welcome on that one. He gave him a welcome, then picked him up. Well, even when they don't get the sacks, they're right there on the backfield. Now, you said earlier about uh, just what kind of a player he is. They say the best since Bruce Smith at Virginia Tech. I see the best, uh, you know, at Virginia Tech for a long time. And, you know, you can't continue to get pressure to your face. He makes bad passes. That makes good pass defense. He has seven sacks, but he also has 24 quarterback hurries. He is always in the backfield. And they are going for it on fourth and six. Trailing 17-0 here in the second. Johnson quickly thrown down. Torrey and Gray on the blitz. And Virginia Tech will take over. Now that's, uh, here we are in the uh, second quarter. We're talking about a great field goal attempt could get you three points. And because of the 17 by Virginia Tech, it turns it all around, allows them to make a big play, and uh, it makes West Virginia have deep trouble as we go. Gray last year, first team all, Big East. He's the leading tackler in the secondary. You know, they, they have him aptly named. They call him a rover in that defensive terminology, and he certainly rolls all over the place. Does a fantastic job for him. You talk about a dominating team. Virginia Tech is becoming one rapidly in the Big East. Oxen died on the pitch. Nowhere to go. Quickly the hole covered by Charles Emanuel. Now looking down the road, when you're talking about Virginia Tech, they might have one loss, but the one loss is, uh, is something that they played early in the year against BC, and uh, they're in great shape because they have the win that counts, which is the Miami win. So they're in great shape and playing like that today, playing with a lot of confidence. And like Frank said, it's an outstanding football team in area, all areas, and they're playing that way. This five-game winning streak is the longest win streak for Beamer since he's been in Blacksburg. As you see more banged up, Jay Haygood limping off. But Beamer's team winning five in a row. The last time that the team won six in a row, Virginia Tech, that was back in 1967 when Frank Beamer was a defensive back for the team. His name is synonymous, I think, with uh, Virginia Tech success. But Bill Dooley did an outstanding job building that program also. Oxendine is crunched as soon as he gets it. Jamie Sweeney with the big hit and another loss. Sweeney, the backup linebacker. Let's set it once again. You can just hear this one from Sweeney. Oxendine makes the catch and then gets greeted. How many people in America would like to catch this ball? Ouch. <laughs> those, uh, those are not excellent receptions <laughs> for minus yardage yet. So 
That's football. That's fun. Third and 17. Oxentine still out there after that crunch. Druckenmiller in the shotgun. Nice hit as he throws the football. And an incomplete pass. That's a bad play. By, that's a bad play by Jim. He can't wait that long. He should have taken off with the football. Brown liking what John Browning did. Browning bothered by the knee injury. He didn't start, but wants to get out there and comes up with a big play. He did have plenty of time. Yes, he did. Once he makes that move, he can't stop and come off that thing. He's going to get hit in some place. Luckily, he didn't lose the football. And with a score 17-0, he doesn't need to make plays like that. John Thomas back to punt. Rashawn Vanderpool back to the seat right there Cornelius White will stop it that's where West Virginia will take over a 34 yard punt and no return Mountaineers trailing 17 nothing 822 to play on the second Virginia Tech leading West Virginia 17 nothing in the second quarter it could have been even bigger than that as the homecoming crowd has seen some turnovers Larry Green returning an interception 38 yards for a touchdown and it's been tough for the offense for the Mountaineers, including this one play where it appeared that J.C. Price had stripped West Virginia of the football, and initially they said it was a turnover. Let's listen and hear for the whistle that the play was dead. Now, the whistle came after, but it appeared his knee was down. And I, and I think that's a good call. Also, when they pull the ball out like that, they must protect the ball carrier some ways. I think officials are very conscious of that also. But a big call in the game because it would have been a disaster from a field position standpoint. So first and 10. For the Mountaineers, they'll start off at their own 38. They moved the football well the last time. It came away empty as Leroy White gets his first call of the afternoon across the 40 to the 42. George Del Rico with the tackle. Rico, the leading tackler for the Hokies once again this year. I think you're going to see West Virginia playing better football since the 17-0. They've waited too long to play in this game, but they've played very well since then, both offensively and defensively and special teams. Now let's see if they can keep it up with 7.57 to go in the second quarter. The senior makes all the defensive calls out there on the field. It's easy to look up to if you play defense. Last year led them a tackle, same thing this year. Second and six after the four-yard pickup. They fake a reverse as Robert Walker with his first carry of the game. Very close to a first down. Walker did not start because of an ankle injury. Tony Morrison breaks him down. But comes up with a big play right there. You know, you're talking about a great back. It's backs who make people miss. Here's a defensive back sitting right over there waiting for the sweep. Gives him the move and cuts right back inside and uh, makes the big play on the thing. Lovett Purnell with a good block. Let's go back to our Big East Studios. Another update with John Sanders. Mike, we take you to Ohio State once again. This is Eddie George right up the middle into the end zone for the touchdown from the nine. He's over 1,000 yards on the season, and Ohio State laying a licking on Iowa, 28-0. From there, we go to Illinois. Illinois has the lead in the second quarter. They are driving Robert Holcomb from the seven. Squeezes away from a defender into the end zone. It is now 14 to 3. Illinois surprising Northwestern at this point. Let's go back to Morgantown, Mike. All right, John. Northwestern's dream season having a tough afternoon against the fighting line on. First and 10. Ball now to 48. So Walker able to move the chains on his first carry. Play fake, reverse to Vanderpool. Tries to get outside and thrown down. Antonio Banks not fooled on the play at all. Antonio was the one that was fooled by 43 of the move inside, but it came right back, and uh, Rasheen Vanderpool didn't fool him. <clears throat> now, again, great call. They faked the reverse this time. This time they run it. But Vanderpool sitting out there with nobody to block on, on, on uh, Antonio Banks, and he makes the big play. You can see that he... He's pretty proud of himself after the last miss. The open field tackle, that's when you just focus on somebody's legs and wrap around. Don't look at trying when they try and juke you. That's it. So a second and 12. Get a good offensive series going in. They've, they've settled down and know how they're going to attack you. Play fake, they're going for it. David Saunders overthrown. Banks right there in the coverage. Crowd wanted some interference. But Saunders had no chance of that one. 
Antonio Banks has bounced back with two strong plays in a row. You know, Chad, again, when you're throwing a post cut like this, you've got the lead to receive. You can't throw it behind him because he's already got a defensive back beat. And you can't throw it behind him like that because Banks will not let him get there. When you have the shoulder like that's good pass defense. There is some contact there, but again, Banks is going for the ball as is Saunders. Plus, when he has the shoulder ahead of him, you're not going to call that pass defense. You're not going to call it because you've got position and you can allow to elbow him a little bit and get the arm up there. Good play, man. That's two good plays in a row by Antonio Banks. Third down and 12. You see Tech comfortably in front. Still plenty of time here in the second quarter. Johnson fires. Incomplete. Alexander, the intended receiver. Lauren Johnson right there. And Johnson once again on his back after a play. When, when you get third down and long, they just have too much pressure on the, on the quarterback for him to complete these long passes. They got to pass and run with it. Too much pressure. He feels it. He hurries the throws and it goes too high and outside for him. And they've changed punters, the Mountaineers, as you see Johnson walking off. He's been whacked all afternoon. John Powers, the junior, comes on. Brian West has struggled, so I watch him get a good kick and they'll say, Coach Steven, why haven't you been playing him all year? <laughs> He's just as loose as a goose. Watching poor Brian go through all the trouble. They've alternated. Powers gets a high kick, but a short one. <laughs> Takes a bounce. It may have hit a Tech player. Yes, it did. West Virginia ball. Yes, it did. So the short punt works perfectly for the Mountaineers. And Frank Beamer certainly not pleased. Now you're talking about big plays in the special teams. That's how you get back in football games. That's how you lose football games. And it's a sign that everybody gets excited about for you. They got the fans back in. They got the ball with 28 yards to go. And it may have been Angelo Harrison as Rob Keyes recovers. Harrison's a great special teams player, but it looked like it hit him in the foot, and Rob Keyes recovers. Great field position for West Virginia at the Virginia Tech 28. Walker nowhere to go that time. Jim Barron in on the tackle. Let's go back to our Big East studios. John Sanders with another update, John. And once again, down the interstate, down I-70 to Columbus, Ohio State, following an interception, goes to work. Bobby Hoying, and there he is again. That's Terry Glenn. He now has seven touchdowns in the last four games, 21 on the season. It's all Buckeyes, 28 nothing. Back to Morgantown, where it's been all tech so far. So far, John, but right now, West Virginia with a chance to do something about it. They've got second and nine. Johnston. That's the blockers ahead. Penalty marker thrown as he runs out of bounds at the 23. The only thing they can be calling there is offensive holding on the wide receiver because that's the only thing out there with the over there on the side of the play. And there it is, Dick. It's a very difficult thing on an offensive receiver because he's just trying to keep not knowing where the man is going and and uh, holds onto his arm just a little bit to just keep his balance. Those are those are tough things to call and uh, I'm not sure that they should be called because it wasn't a big factor in the football play. And the way Banks is playing though, that's probably the only way you're gonna get him away from the ball. Second second down we're made and they'll move it back though to uh, the 30 to Shire the 33 yard line. So second and 14. Now they had two wonderful opportunities. They've got to take advantage of the special teams work. Is it down 17 nothing? Something's got to happen. West Virginia offensively, score-wise, get back in this football. Game. Tech offense, one of the very best in the nation. Three wide receivers here, Mike. Robert Walker gets through the hole and gets past, past the original line of scrimmage. Jim Barron brings him down. It's going to be a third and long, but third and nine, perhaps. Barron, who started early in the season, coming out with a couple of tackles here late in the second. Now, Robert Walker's a great runner, but they put so much pressure on here. He just doesn't have any place to run. He's got to back it inside where the defensive linemen are waiting for him. And I think it's Price that makes the tackle, isn't it? So third and nine. West Virginia looking for their first points in quite some time. They didn't score last week. Tech defense has done a job on him so far here in the first half. Johnston flushed out, trying to go the other way. 
has some room and finally brought down. Didn't have a lot of place to go that time. Now, Coach Nealon probably should go for a field goal in this area to get some points on the board. He's in pretty good field position and could have had three before and went for it on fourth down. I think he learned his lesson. Hank Coleman made the tackle, but that was because of the pressure that flushed him out of the pocket. Very wisely knew that he was taking too much time, just kind of protected the ball after this. J.C. Price, the first Stayed man. in the middle of the football field. J.C. Price again. Forty-three yarder now. Ryan Bauman. And this one wide right, no good. Now the Mountaineers are still scoreless. It has been a tough afternoon so far for the West Virginia offense. Just under four minutes remaining. Second quarter in Morgantown. And the Hokies still in command. Has eight blocks of kick so far in 95. They almost had their ninth here. Well, they're not going to have a chance to block anymore because I think that's the end of the kicks. And with 17 nothing, Donnie's got to go for it the rest of the day. Jim Barron. Look at, look at the pressure they have from all over the place. And uh, Byron stayed down on the thing, but uh, Virginia Tech is just playing too good. Trucker Miller fires. It's complete to Jermaine Holmes. And he gets up to about the 33-yard line on the first down play. Mike Logan right there on the tackle. We'll give him the extra yard as well, so a second. And a little over a yard. That's when you're operating offensively just the way you want to operate. Second and one, you can do anything you want. You've got third down to come back with it. Get your first down easy. Although both defenses have come up with big plays for losses throughout the first half. Tell you what, the West Virginia defense has played well. Yes, they have. But they've been on the field almost the entire first half. Well, it's a question of opportunities here. Able to defense against this. Truck and Miller going downfield for Holmes. Incomplete. As Mike Logan right there, there was some contact, says Holmes, but no flag on the play. Well, the play was underthrown, so the receiver was reaching back for it. Very, very good call by Mike Donato, the defensive uh, referee back there, watching the football play, because uh, that, that's just exactly what you've got to do. And again, Logan turns and looks for the ball as well. That's right. He had just as fair a shot at that as Holmes did. It was underthrown football. That, that caused the problem. Mike Logan is an excellent athlete, good defender. Coming back from a broken forearm, he's broken three times actually. Third and one. Three minutes remaining, first half, 17 nothing. Virginia Tech still in front. Same play, Truck and Miller to Holmes. He's got this one for the and loses it. Let's see if they say the ground caused the fumble. Yes, they say the ground caused the fumble. A complete pass. And the crowd certainly don't like, like, what, does not like that call. Somebody else has got to help Mike on the play to see if it is. He's got to mark the ball and spot it and make the catch. Now, now Neil and furious. We now have a chance through the replay to see just exactly what the officials saw. Well, the ground did cause the fumble. I don't know if he had great control, no. but, but he had the football. No, he didn't have great control. of it. He's still trying to catch it. His knees are on the ground. It's a bad call. Some of the officials should have helped him. Mike had too much to do in that one play all by himself. Brian Edmonds goes nowhere. Quickly hit. But you look, Holmes had it as he came down, but it didn't look like he had secure position in his arms. Let's look at it one more time. He's still trying to catch it. It's underneath his hands and his arms, bobbling in the, in the thing. It's no play. But again, when you're 17 nothing ahead, you can try those kind of football plays and gain this field position when you're third down and one. That's tough on a defense to try to defend everything. The one thing I'm sure the officials say, he did not lose the football until he did hit the ground. But Don Nealon upset. He said, Drucker Miller out of play action. And Bernard Russ right there with another big defensive play. Edmonds has nowhere to go. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, a lot of big games going on around the nation, and John Sanders will be back in our Big East studio. A lot of the highlights. And we'll also have a feature on what is becoming a very intense rivalry 
the Hokies rivalry. and the Mountaineers. There's only one West Virginia guy on the team. I think they made him walk up here to be a part of it. <laughs> they don't have, I don't think they like each other. It's a great rivalry, though. You can see good sportsmanship, good, clean football. And I've admired the way it's been that way all over the Big East. Raphael Williams, the backup defensive lineman, is the only Hokie from West Virginia. Third and 13. Mountaineer defense upset after that call. Chuck Miller hit as he throws. And that one is complete. Jermaine Holmes with a tough catch. Well, they're certainly getting all the breaks. You know, they're making the great plays when they need to make them. And uh, you, you've got to give credit to the West Virginia defense, how they're playing. And 17 to nothing is, is the score. But uh, by the same token, could be a lot more, I think, Mike. Don't you? Absolutely. I mean, they, they have dominated at times as West Virginia's offense has been unable to get on track. Holmes with a tough catch. I think they've called it incomplete, complete. Now they're going to confer on it. Well, again, the bottom line is let's get it right. From the angle we had, it looked like it, but we had it from behind. Now Frank is upset. Oh, there's a holding penalty. All right. So it doesn't matter whether he caught it or not. <laughs> I think that he got the ball down there kind of in a shady area and a shady call. I think they're trying to get it back where it <laughs> So the holding can bring it back. And again, we apologize for Al Hines' microphone. We had some real bad weather earlier with some thunderstorms. Let's see if at halftime we can get that cleared up. So they'll bring the ball all the way back to the Virginia Tech 49 yard. Just a little over a minute remaining here in the first half. 17-0. Hokies in front. They were down 17 to 20 nothing against Purdue in the opening ball game right here. So West Virginia is kind of useless, but Virginia Tech is uh, is playing real well defensively. It's going to be hard for them to score. Yeah. Not an easy team to come from behind against. Play action from Chuck and Miller. Going for the end zone. Brian Still. And he overthrows him again. Charles Emanuel right with Still. And it'll be a fourth down, and John Thomas will come on to punt. You know, they live on the big plays. It's, uh, it's amazing that, that you know, with third down and 35, that somebody's able to get by him like that. Just amazing. Once again, John Sanders back at our Big East Studios coming up at halftime. A little less than a minute remaining here at half. All the highlights and scores from around the nation and the feature on the Virginia West Virginia rivalry. West Virginia dodged the bullet on that one. And Thomas gets this one off. Vanderpool will pick it up. Breaks one tackle, cuts inside. Gets across the 20 to the 22. Lawrence Lewis. In there on the stop, and West Virginia will take over with 43 seconds remaining in the first half, still looking for their first points. Very aggressive play there by Rashawn. With that field position, though, you, you could look for Don Nealon probably to uh, just eat the clock up and get out of here 17 to nothing and try to regroup and come out with a dynamic second half because they'll have the ball, and as sure as he runs the football, you, you see him get booed. 41 yard they, punt. They pay money, but they love to do what they, <laughs> they want to coach, too. Robert Walker across the 20. And our resident Swami makes the right prediction. Here come the boos. <laughs> Jim Barron on the stop. At least I know my crowds if I don't know football. <laughs> well, oh. you never got booed in your coaching career, did you? Well, I, I, well, I, I thought they were. When we had Donnie McPherson, they were talking about McPherson all the time. I always thought they were talking about the quarterback, but they really were talking about me. So they used to, when they were, booed, that is. <laughs> let's. Let's say this 17 to nothing West Virginia is lucky to get out with a 17 to nothing score congratulations Virginia Tech for being such a good football team a play you did the way you did the first half and they don't get off the final play more booze from the homecoming crowd they've sold out the Mountaineer field but not a good first half 17 nothing Virginia Tech leading at halftime right now let's go back to our Big East Studios and John Sanders such a critical game for Don Nealon. Again, his team comes in three and four overall. They're two and one in the Big East. For them to have any shot of the Big East championship, they certainly have to win this afternoon. And they also have to make sure for them to secure a bowl bid that they get those six wins against Division I opponents. Well, 
you know, let's let's face it. If you don't get six wins against Division One A opponents, you don't belong in the bowl. So I think that is a very very good rule, and they have got to pay attention to that as they come out here in the second half. Uh, you know, Larson has been kicking these things in the end zone, which makes an 80-yard drive for West Virginia. And uh, let's see if they can return that thing out of there. But he's got a powerful leg, and of course he's got the win with him on this kick. He's been lucky in that aspect today. Making sure Rashawn Vanderpool doesn't have a chance to bring it back. He's one of the premier guys in that department, and once again, can't do it. So West Virginia will take over at their own 20. Don Nealon knows this is a game that's so critical he will not downplay just how critical it is. Well, there's no question if we lose this game today, we're probably history because uh, you're not going to win this league with more than two losses and you're not going to win it with two losses. We have one. Virginia Tech has one. They lost to B.C. Uh, I think they're on a roll right now. Somebody's going to have to beat Virginia Tech. I think they're on a roll and uh, they're in here today. Let's take a crack at them. That's that's a competitor. Don Nealon. And they're taking a crack and he comes to the second half crack down 17 -0. Johnston will throw on the first play in the second half, and he completes on the first one. Vanderpool with the catch at about the 34-yard line. A rare time where he has plenty of time to throw. That weak side in the play action football play has been the best pass they've had all football day. I'm sure you're going to see it more in the second half, especially with Vanderpool sitting over there playing the split end. So a 14-yard pickup, and you see Vanderpool moving up on the all-purpose yardage. That time, a little gain on the run. As Myron Newsom quickly comes up and makes the stop. And Barber, not a lot of room. I think they have to continue attacking the tight end with the run game to make sure that they respect the run so they can throw the weak side play, which is the thing they're setting up all the time. Nealon's team in the second half have been strong, but so is Virginia Tech. In fact, in the last two plus seasons, when Tech is leading at halftime, they're 20 and one. And they've got a 17 nothing cushion. Jansen under pressure, and Cornell Brown with the sack. Second sack of the afternoon for Brown, and Johnson has been getting up all afternoon after being knocked down. You know, they only had two receivers out, maximum protection. And still with the great surge and rush and harassment by the Virginia Tech uh, front seven, really. Uh, they just have nobody open. Chad very wisely hangs onto the football, makes it a third down and long situation, but at least they had that situation and didn't get themselves into trouble. Tech fifth in the nation in scoring defense, and they have not given up a point so far today. Johnston again brought down as the sack just continues. Cornell Brown and Waverly Jackson are right there. J.C. Price. Price actually would get credited with that one. It's not one guy, it's another, Dick. Well, it's momentum. It's Virginia Tech saying, no, you're not going to score at all, West Virginia. Now they go into the kicking game. Who are they going to this time? Is it, uh, is it back to uh, West? Nope, John Powers. John Powers is back. Once again, they'll give that credit, by the way. Brown will get the sack on that one. And almost a block. Angelo Harrison right there. Larry Green signals for a fair catch back at his own 38-yard line. And that's where the Hokies will take over. So Powers replacing Brian West has got off a couple of pretty solid punts. That one from 40 yards away. Virginia Tech ball with the lead. Virginia Tech leading 17-0. They have the football for the first time in the second half. And they won the field position. West Virginia started on the 20 with 80 to go with the punt. They're starting on the 40 with 60 to go. So everything is in the favor of Virginia Tech right now. As long as they don't do anything stupid, they've got complete control of this football game. Chuck and Miller to throw on first down. Fires complete to Bryant still. And he's knocked out of bounds at midfield. Good for the first down. There's Emmanuel and Beasley right there, but an 11-yard pickup. Now, when you watch the action here, you'll see that uh, Jim Drunkenmiller probably threw this ball better than any he's thrown all day. He really stepped into this thing and let that thing fly right into the hole. And uh, so he's loose with the 17 nothing lead, makes everybody loose. They can do a lot of things they couldn't have done in the early in the, in the game. Still a big play receiver. You see averaging just under 20 yards per catch. They love to go deep to him. They love to go to Dwayne Thomas up the middle, and he gets maybe four yards. J.T. Thomas among those in on the stop. Hey, John. 
You know, you have to uh, watch very closely, but J.T. Thomas, number 41, middle linebacker for West Virginia, is a key run defender. Excellent football player. Just continue to play well. I know that Virginia Tech wants to run the ball a little bit more to put this thing away, but West Virginia is not letting it do it very well. Thomas, it seems, is always around the football. Second and six. The Hokies have mixed it up nicely between passing and running, and, and Drunken Miller didn't like what he saw on that one, so he's going to call the timeout. First one, obviously, of the third quarter. Again, Virginia Tech looking for their sixth win in a row. They haven't had a six-game winning streak since 1967 when head coach Frank Beamer was a starter in the defensive secondary. Mountaineers and a packed stadium, although some of the people, because of the rain, left a little bit early. Certainly not happy with the Mountaineer performance thus far. A lot has to do with just a super play of Virginia Tech as they look for their sixth straight win. They lead it 17-0. Trucker Miller on a second and six. And a quick handoff and nowhere to go is Dwayne Thomas, Jamie Sweeney, and Kevin Lando right there to greet him. Now again, just a delayed draw. Good call in this situation. But uh, by the same token, West Virginia playing good defense in spite of the 17 and nothing score. And uh, Virginia Tech's got to get something established offensively in the second half here. They've done all right on third downs. This one a third and seven after the loss of one. Drucker Miller for the side and complete. Jermaine Holmes looked like he was running run one route and then Drucker Miller expecting another. So punting situation for the Hokies. John Thomas coming on. Good defensive series. Here at Mountaineer Field, Mike Brain along with Dick McPherson, our producer Paul Carlson, director Jimmy Edmonds. Terrific crew on hand. Rashawn Vanderbilt back to receive once again at his own 10 yard line. Thomas handles a snap. And Vanderbilt will call for a fair catch. Virginia Tech leading 17 0. They have the football for the first time in the second half. And they won the field position. West Virginia started on the 20 with 80 to go with the punt. They're starting on the 40 with 60 to go. So everything is in the favor of Virginia Tech right now. As long as they don't do anything stupid, they've got complete control of this football game. Chuck and Miller to throw on first down. Fires complete to Bryant still. And he's knocked out of bounds at midfield. Chuck Good for the first down. There's Emmanuel and Beasley right there, but an 11 yard pickup. Now, when you watch the action here, you'll see that uh, Jim Drunkenmiller probably threw this ball better than any he's thrown all day. He really stepped into this thing and let that thing fly right into the hole. And uh, so he's loose with the 17 nothing lead, makes everybody loose. They can do a lot of things they couldn't have done in the early in the, in the game. Still a big play receiver. You see, averaging just under 20 yards per catch. They love to go deep to him. They love to go to Dwayne Thomas up the middle, and he gets maybe four yards. J.T. Thomas among those in on the stop. Hey, John. You know, you have to uh, watch very closely, but J.T. Thomas, number 41, middle linebacker for West Virginia, is a key run defender. Excellent football player. Just continue to play well. I know that Virginia Tech wants to run the ball a little bit more to put this thing away, but West Virginia is not letting it do it very well. Thomas, it seems, is always around the football. Second and six. The Hokies have mixed it up nicely between passing and running, and, and Drunken Miller didn't like what he saw on that one, so he's going to call the timeout. First one, obviously, of the third quarter. Again, Virginia Tech looking for their sixth win in a row. They haven't had a six-game winning streak since 1967 when head coach Frank Beamer was a starter in the defensive secondary. Mountaineers and a packed stadium, although some of the people, because of the rain, left a little bit early. Certainly not happy with the Mountaineer performance thus far. 
lot has to do with just a super play of Virginia Tech as they look for their sixth straight win. They lead it 17 nothing. Trucker Miller on a second and six. And a quick handoff and nowhere to go is Dwayne Thomas, Jamie Sweeney, and Kevin Lando right there to greet him. Now again, just a delayed draw. Good call in this situation. But uh, by the same token, West Virginia playing good defense in spite of the 17 and nothing score. And uh, Virginia Tech's got to get something to establish offensively in the second half here. They've done all right on third downs. This one a third and seven after the loss of one. Drucker Miller to the sideline. Complete. Jermaine Holmes looked like he was running run one route, and then Drucker Miller expecting another. So punting situation for the Hokies. John Thomas coming on. Good defensive series. Here at Mountain Air Field, Mike Brain along with Dick McPherson, our producer Paul Carlson, director Jimmy Edmonds, terrific crew on hand. Rashawn Vanderbilt back to receive once again at his own 10 yard line. Thomas handles a snap. And Vanderbilt will call for a fair catch. So West Virginia will take over at their own 10. 37 yard kick, but he gets it inside the 20. Beautiful punt from Thomas. Gets his job done. Nice fair catch. Ball on the 15 yard line. A uh, lot of pressure on the punter, but he did just exactly what he got the ball high in the air and good coverage. And uh, that special teams are performing real well. Now, what can West Virginia do offensively, Dick, to offset the pass rush that, that is just always in Chad Johnson's face? I don't think they can. Uh, they've done everything they the they, Virginia Tech's just too powerful for their offensive line. They're not trying to knock the West Virginia offensive line. It's just a great talent, Virginia Tech. Robert Walker has a hole. William Yarbrough finally brings him down, but not before uh, first down up to the 29-yard line. Again, a coordination with two guys going inside on the rush, and, and he runs it right down to the safety. But those are the things that excite people. And, uh, you know, the guy that can do it for you is Robert Walker. Walker, the school's second all-time leading rusher behind Artie Owens. He will probably break that this season. But he didn't start today with an ankle injury, but now starting to come on. Another call, another home. Iron Newsom brings him down at about the 35. And another solid pickup. You know, Tony Alexander's playing the wide receiver and, and making some good blocks. Uh, you know, uh, that, that's allowing him to get down the football field because the corner can't be a factor in the play. And of course, Cantroy Barber, the fullback, is such a bull. Second and four. Robert Purnell, the tight end in motion. He's been quiet in terms of pass catching today. Walker again, tripped up behind a line of scrimmage. Brandon Simonis, fielder makes the hit. You know, you got to give the young man credit. I saw him yesterday in the locker room, almost uh, passed out with the flu, high temperature. Didn't even come out on the field for the for the lazy man's practice on Friday. And here he, the great effort that he gives on this football play, leaps over the thing, and just tries to leg whip wherever he can to disrupt the offense, and he sure did. Simonis, in addition to the flu, he suffered a concussion last week against Rutgers. Didn't play much in the second half. One of their better defensive players. Third and ten. Johnston on the play fake. Fires. Complete to Vanderpool. And brought down at the 40. Lauren Johnson made the tackle, and it's a good thing he did. Because if Vanderpool would have scooted away, there was no one in front of him. Well, there was an all-out blitz. And a great uh, protection. But you got to give the offensive line credit for something. Master of protection. Wisely done. And the Vanderpool's right there to make it the throw. But they were coming after him. Johnson, the freshman. Make of the tackle, but not before they move to change again. Pitch goes to Walker. Myron Newsom breaks it, and he's brought down maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Now, I, I think you can watch Brian Newsom on this football play and watch the perfect technique he uses. Just keep the feet moving, good balance, make sure that he can make the play, and I think we're going to get a replay on this. It's a classic lesson on how to play a defense by a linebacker. There's Myron right there. 
Big East Defensive Excellent. Player of the Week. Yeah. Excellent defense. Nice tackle. Against Rutgers return an interception 71 yards for TD last week. Johnson going to kick it out to Gary. Not a nice thing to do considering Del Rico and Simonis were right there. Very, very bad uh, selection. Chad should have just turned that upfield and got what he can out of it there. He had that well defended. And Gary's system, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. All right, I see three Hokies. You yep. take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those plays you just duck it in and get two or three yards positive and move it on from there. So a third and ten. You know, we keep talking so much about the West Virginia struggles offensively, but boy, you got to give so much of the credit to superior defense. Well, you also talk about don't get yourself to third down and ten situations. Too much pressure on you. Johnson throws complete. Saunders with the catch. And it's in Virginia Tech territory, so it should be a first down, and it is. Big play. Yeah, and West Virginia receivers better make sure that he doesn't take himself out of the first down area. Just can't get too fancy here, because I think he had a little bit more on this thing than they gave him, but he's good enough to move the chain. Saunders, one of the real surprises this year, leads the team in yards per catch. As Barber, with a second effort, able to somehow get a few yards out of the play. Del Rico among those in on the stop along with Cornell Brown. We've seen a little bit of spurts from the offense, but again, nothing sustained, and that's been West Virginia's problem all year. There has not been consistency. They lost their opener, then won, then lost and won. They've never won lost more than two in a row all year no two game winning streaks at all well the other thing about it is that they've only r risen to the occasion one time against Boston College when they cha were challenged they had to have a win they got it now they've got to be coming back in the second half here but you've got to like what you see about Virginia Tech they're so well balanced offensively and defensively he knows he's got a good defense he's going to stay with it all the way because he's not going to make mistakes on offense Mountaineers call timeout little over eight minutes remaining in the third Tech still comfortably in front the game of four. Big East Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated in a use, rebroadcast, or other transmissions of any or all of this game without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. We're in the third quarter at Mountaineer Field, West Virginia, with a second and seven. They trail 17 nothing to Virginia Tech. Jimmy Gary gets the call, bounced outside can't get away from George Del Rico who just wouldn't let him go and a penalty marker thrown usually coming from that area it's an on the offense and possibly holding you know you've got to admire the the running ability of the West Virginia running backs but boy oh boy it's tough against that Virginia Tech defense holding Offense, a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. Virginia Tech number one in the Big East in rushing defense, fourth in the nation. Teams are averaging just 85.7 yards per game against them and only 2.1 yards per carry. That, those are just great numbers. And the eight man front, they put the extra man up there and challenge you to throw the football and you've got to throw it well. and. And uh, West Virginia's got to decide to do that pretty soon because, you know, you're down 17 points and they've got to go to a pass offense here. And I think uh, Donnie's he's waiting very wisely to see what he can do here, but it's going to come pretty soon. So second and 17 after the penalty. Johnson on a play fake under pressure again, and he's brought down once again. Jimmy Barron with the sack this time. Barron's had a strong afternoon. Now we talk about the fierce rush of Virginia Tech but it's a four man rush and this time it's coverage and re real pressure inside but he has got no place to throw the football. He's got to tuck it away and take the hit. And now let's take a look at our out of town scores brought to you by John Hancock official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Third and twenty four. Catch Roy Barber gets back across into Virginia Tech territory, well short of the first down, back to the original line of scrimmage. 
And a fourth down coming up. Torian Gray makes the tackle. So Powers once again on the punt. Larry Green is back. Green's had a, already a touchdown today. That returning an interception, 38 yards for a score. Does an excellent job in terms of the intelligent factor of when to catch these things deep and when to let them go. Trolls the thing. Tech great at blocking punts. Powers, another fourth kick, but he gets it inside the 20 and it bounces down. Where Virginia Tech will take over at their own eight yard line. Maybe not didn't like the way it sounded, went off his foot, but again, the end result, all that matters, a 39 yard kick and poor field position for Virginia Tech. I think when they're kicking from the uh, punny to the 50 with that punny, it's always going to work out well because they can't get in the end zone anyway. It's just bouncing around on them. Donnie, I think, is now deciding on a wide punter or a deep punter. It's a real problem on that football team and one that's hard to correct during the season. It's a really very obvious they don't have anybody that can punt very well. It's always the last things you talk about right. when you're speaking of matchups and who's good and who's not. And it's plays such a huge factor week in and week out. Chuck and straight up the middle with the handoff to Thomas. Bernard Russ on the stop, but a strong run for Dwayne Thomas once again, maybe eight yards. Now, this is Virginia Tech's game here, being ahead 17 to nothing. They're just eating up the clock, trying to get this game down uh, just exactly the way that uh, Frank Beamer wants to play this right now. The clock is uh, the thing they've got, is their own worst enemy. Because they've got the great points that they need and with the Virginia Tech defense. Duncan Miller, the junior, has become the leader of this offense. Holds on to it, kicks it out for Thomas, has a lot of room, easily with a first down up to the 29-yard line. Van Washington stops him, but not before another big game from Thomas, who's now starting to rack up the yards. No. Great hit by the free safety Van Washington, but when the free safety is making a lot of uh, tackles for you, they're going to be moving the chain. 14-yard pickup and another first down. Both teams running that weak side option very well. Chuck Miller looks like he's changing the play on the first down. Thomas again broke one tackle, but not further after that is Van Washington right there on the stop. Washington's been very active. Now, Jimmy's made two real good tackles as the free safety Van Washington has. What he's got to do now is back off because you, you should see a football play right down the middle off of play action. And he's got to start playing pass defense uh, because he's done a tremendous job in terms of stopping the run when the free safety is stopping it. Uh, you're not playing very good defense up front. He's good at pass defense. Seven career interceptions. Second and eight. That's Brian Still. Still scoots through a hole and taken down at the 39. Bernard Russ once again coming way across the field to make the tackle just shy of the first down. The timing on this play with the pulling of the offensive tackle, the block down by the wide receiver, is the third time they've run this extremely well today, and the, the wide receivers really can time up this trap block. And watch the tackle coming out here and watch the squeeze on the football play, and here comes the trap right there. And he's right down the football field on it. Jermaine Running Holmes. it well. Jermaine Holmes also with a nice block to help. Still buy some time. So third and one. Thomas backs in and it appears that he'll have it. It's going to be awful close if he has it. Canute Curtis on the tackle. Let's see where they mark the ball. Now you can watch it real close here is where the ball should be marked. J.T. Thomas right up there slowing him down caused the spin. Yes, he has it very easily. Yeah. Yeah. Very good spot by the officials first down. They're going to measure it, but just by the way the ball is, it appears that they've got it. Yes, they have. Yeah. And legitimately so. But J.T. Thomas came over the top and spun him around on the thing. 
so they'll move the chains again. Frank Beamer likes the way his offense has come along. They've sputtered a little bit early, but they have really scored a lot of points the last couple of weeks. 122 points the last two games prior to this afternoon. And uh, the offense not responsible for all those scores today. Again, the defense scoring a touchdown. Now for people here boo Today's Big East Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of creative sports at a use, rebroadcast, or other transmissions of any or all of this game without the express prior written consent of creative sports is prohibited. We're in the third quarter at Mountaineer Field, West Virginia, with a second and seven. They trail 17-0 to Virginia Tech. Jimmy Gary gets the call, bounced outside. And can't get away from George Del Rico. He just wouldn't let him go. And a penalty marker thrown. Usually coming from that area, it's an on the offense and possibly holding. You know, you've got to admire the, the running ability of the West Virginia running backs, but boy, oh boy, it's tough against that Virginia Tech defense. Holding, Holding offense, offense, a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Virginia Tech number one in the Big East in rushing defense. Fourth in the nation. Teams are averaging just 85.7 yards per game against them and only 2.1 yards per carry. That, those are just great numbers. And the eight-man front, they put the extra man up there and challenge you to throw the football, and you've got to throw it well. And and uh, West Virginia's got to decide to do that pretty soon because, you know, you're down 17 points and they've got to go to a pass offense here. And I think uh, Donnie's he's waiting very wisely to see what he can do here, but it's going to come pretty soon. So second and 17 after the penalty. Johnson under pressure again, and he's brought down once again. Jimmy Barron with the sack this time. Barron's had a strong afternoon. Now we talk about the fierce rush of Virginia Tech, but it's a four-man rush, and this time it's coverage. And re real pressure inside, but he has got no place to throw the football. He's got to tuck it away and take the hit. And now let's take a look at our out-of-town scores brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Third and 24. And Troy Barber gets back across into Virginia Tech territory, but well short of the first down, back to the original line of scrimmage. And a fourth down coming up, Torian Gray makes the tackle. So Powers once again on the punt. Larry Green is back. Green's had a Already a touchdown today. That returning an interception, 38 yards for a score. Does an excellent job in terms of the intelligence factor of when to catch these things deep and when to let them go. Trolls the thing. Tech great at blocking punts. Powers, another poor kick, but he gets it inside the 20. And it bounces down. Where Virginia Tech will take over at their own 8-yard line. Maybe not didn't like the way it sounded it went off his foot, but again, the end result, all that matters, a 39-yard kick and poor field position for Virginia Tech. I think when they're kicking from the uh, punting from the 50 with that punting, it's always going to work out well because they can't get in the end zone anyway. It's just bouncing around on them. Donnie, I think, is now deciding on a wide punter or a deep punter. It's a real problem for that football team and one that's hard to correct during the season. It's really very obvious they don't have anybody that can punt very well. It's always the last things you talk about right. when you're speaking of matchups and who's good and who's not. And it's plays such a huge factor week in and week out. Dr. Miller straight up the middle with the handoff to Thomas. Bernard Russ on the stop, but a strong run for Dwayne Thomas once again, maybe eight yards. Now, this is Virginia Tech's game here, being ahead 17 to nothing. They're just eating up the clock, trying to get this game down uh, just exactly the way that uh, Frank Beamer wants to play this right now. The clock is uh, the thing they've got, is their own worst enemy. Because they've got the great points that they need in the Virginia Tech defense. Drucker Miller, the junior, has become the leader of this offense. 
holds on to it, kicks it out for Thomas, has a lot of room, easily with a first down up to the 29-yard line. Van Washington stops him, but not before another big game from Thomas, who's now starting to rack up the yards. Great hit by the free safety Van Washington, but when the free safety is making a lot of uh, tackles for you, they're going to be moving the chain. 14-yard pickup and another first down. Both teams running that weak side option very well. Chuck and Miller. Looks like he's changing the play on the first down. And Thomas again broke one tackle, but not further after that is Van Washington right there on the stop. Washington's been very active. Now, Jimmy's made two real good tackles as the free safety. Fourth quarter set to begin in Morgantown. An overcast day on homecoming weekend. Virginia Tech leading West Virginia 17-0 here at Mountaineer Field. And you see two sets of hash marks. What's that mean, Coach? Well, really what it means is that the rule changed a couple of three years ago, and it shows you that West Virginia football field, AstroTurf, is more than two or three years old because they were painted in, sewed in, you couldn't get them out, so they just moved it in. The officials are told, ignore the yellow ones, play the white ones, new rule, and as all rules are, being an old defensive coach myself, they're always there to help the offense, to <laughs> take away something that, I don't know, but it doesn't help the defense, but it doesn't look like it's hurting Virginia Tech today at all, I'll no, tell you. Sir. Defensive guys never change. I wonder if you could understand that explanation I gave though. <laughs> Drucker Miller on play action under a little pressure. Fires complete to Brian Jennings, the tight end. Touchdown. And Tech scores again. 37 yard touchdown pass. Drucker Miller to Jennings. Now, again, the touchdown was caused by a wide receiver blocking the keeper, the guy in the end zone. Great bootleg call, run game bootleg. And uh, just about putting this game away from a solid standpoint, unless they make some big mistakes. Jennings, the 6'4 junior, has become a threat as he picks up. He's one of five Hokies and double digit receivers in terms of receptions. And Chucker Miller certainly pleased with that one. Well, it's a, just a great call from that strong running game into the bootleg action, tight in across the football team. Adam Larson connects. And Virginia Tech. In complete control. Jennings with a touchdown catch. He's got 13 receptions this year. Had only four of last year. Comes up with a big one this afternoon. Some togetherness at Mountaineer Field despite the score for West Virginia. And speaking of togetherness, we want to congratulate our director, Jimmy Edmonds, who last Sunday married. Got married to the lovely Kathleen. We congratulate the newlyweds and hope Kathleen makes better decisions in the future because this decision is very, very questionable. <laughs> He's made good decisions with the cameras here today, though. Uh, he, well, he made a great decision. I don't know about Kathleen, though. Oh, I see. Okay. Kathleen in Rochester. Hello. Uh, you know, one of the objects of a visiting team, especially to a sold-out homecoming crowd, is to take the crowd out of the game. But this is really something that West Virginia's got to pay attention to. Not only take them out of the game, they're sending them home. They're all leaving the stands. And that's not right to show loyalty to the great, what the pride of the West Virginia State is, this football team. Should be staying a little bit longer. Larson will kick off. Vanderpool at his own eight. Big block from Foreman. Vanderpool, not a lot of room to go. Still on his feet, however. And finally knocked out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. And that's where the Hokies will take control. They lead it 24 nothing. Opening of the fourth. You know, Rashawn Vanderpool could play for a lot of people with that kind of an effort down 24 nothing just out of the fourth quarter. He's doing everything he can to get people excited and get in this football game. Now we're going to have to do what West Virginia did not want to have to do is to throw the ball in every down and try to get back in this game. And they've got to this is when you could see either great success or great disaster. Of course. Mountaineers taking over, and they do so with Eric Boyka, the backup quarterback, in there for Chad Johnson. He hands it off, and not a lot of room once again. This defensive Virginia Tech, just incredible. And there you see Boykin's numbers. Hasn't played a heck of a lot. Transfer from Michigan. 
he's out of Dayton Ohio and uh, it's tough for him to be standing on the sidelines all day and try to come in and resurrect a uh, 24 to nothing behind football team played well against East Carolina as you see Boykin under pressure showing some mobility but then thrown down Lawrence Lewis with Boy. the sack Boy, I'll tell you, yeah, they are relentless. And can they run? Have they got speed and determination? Well, it's fitting the Boykin feels what Chad Johnson has felt all afternoon. Constant pressure. You know, I know a lot of the Syracuse football players are watching this game along with the coaches. They know they're going to have their work cut out down in Blacksburg, Virginia next week. But that's what's great about a conference. That they know there'll be a big game coming up again next week for the conference championship, possibly. Speaking of backup quarterbacks, we want to send our best wishes to Wilkie Perez, the third straight quarterback for the Mountaineers, who went to an appendectomy this past Thursday. As you see the run over to the 16-yard line, Barber getting at the crowd booing, as they don't like to see rushing plays when they're down 24-0. But again, our best to Wilkie Perez is only about 200 yards away from the field in the hospital. Close by the Mountaineer Field. You know, Dan Zimmerow was wanted to ask me, have him ask me the question: Are they following the game plan? No, they're not anymore. When you're down 24 nothing, the game plan goes out of the window. Now you've got to start throwing the football. I think you'll see it on the next series. John Powell is on the punt once again. Larry Green is back, fields it at his own 43. Slips and falls just shy of midfield. Ken Fisher right there, 41-yard punt for Powers. Virginia Tech and Frank Beamer in total control this afternoon on the road. You know, it's been a tough week for uh, West Virginia all week, coming back off a big loss to Syracuse, trying to get things squared away. Then on Wednesday or Thursday, Wookie Perez had an emergency appendectomy, and uh, everybody feels bad for him. We want to make sure we say hello. I'm sure a picture of you, Wookie, because the coach wanted the two. Let you know that we're all rooting for you. The parents are up there. He's going to be fine, but it was scary there for a while. Handsome guy out of Miami, South Florida. And they're undefeated. They don't miss you down there at all, Wookie. So, first and ten for Virginia Tech. Trucker Miller kicks it out. As Oxendine spins. Still going. Tackle at about the 43-yard line. Terry Siverin on the stop. Bernard Russ has given an all-out effort. Played well this afternoon. But the defense has been out there just too long as the West Virginia offense has really struggled once again. Well, there's nothing wrong with the uh, West Virginia defense for what they've been able to accomplish here this afternoon. But by the same token, they've got to get a little bit more firepower on their offense. For sure, get a better special teams. They're going to win a lot of football games here. Late stage 1995. Druckenmiller throws it high for Brian Stell. Intercepted by Van Washington. And the Mountaineers will take over at their own four. No. Even though it's 24 nothing and the game is in control, don't understand that. Well, I think that, uh, you know, they should be eating up the clock, but whatever they want to do, I guess they want to get some more points or something. But by the same token, the receivers not running good patterns here. They're coming too far across the football field on the post cuts. Should stay long and let the quarterback throw the ball up in the air. So there's a miscommunication. So I'm not sure the receiver didn't cause a lot of this. But Van Washington uh, is, is playing great football. Drucker Miller. I think he knew when he released it. Certainly knew after. Yeah. Eric Boykin to Leroy White. White has nowhere to go. Brandon Simonis still with his arms wrapped around him. Well, West Virginia has not had good field position. Eight of their 12 drives have been on their 20 sec their 22 yard line or less than that or worse than that I should say. And they just haven't able to be able to get it going. Yeah. Well. Uh, you know, it's, it's self-inflicted. You know, and the special teams are causing it. And uh, they've got to start generating some offense here and to get this crowd that's remaining in the back of this football game. Boykin will throw. Incomplete for Vanderpool. He had to release it in a hurry again. The pressure coming up. Tell you what, as good as Syracuse played last week against West Virginia defensively, and Syracuse not known to be a great defensive team, but they really had a great game. Virginia Tech is, is up to the task as well this week. But that's what they're known for. 
You know, uh, West Virginia with uh, the offense being shut out two weeks in a row is uh, going to make for another long week coming up. Boykin on the pitch. Curtis Keaton run out of bounds at the six-yard line. Brandon Simonis right there. You know, here's a young man again. We, we, t we talked about uh, other people doing this. Uh, Simone does a great job of setting this thing up and getting the feet moving. You know, this is really a good football play. Nice option series. Dangerous down here in the end zone. He's running out of the end zone with it. But watch the feet action here. Powers will punt. Now, even though it's 24 nothing, and again, they haven't been able to get going, why, why not throw the ball at this point? I think field position. He's just trying to save his life here right now. I think that uh, he will as soon as he gets field position. I think also Eric is a little bit better run pass guy than Chad is, and I think they were trying to move the football with the option series and so forth. Nice high punt from Powers, 38 yards. Larry Green with a fair catch. Virginia Tech takes over in West Virginia territory. Now I think you'll see them settle down and drive the football down, eat the clock up, and head down home. I think that uh, we're going to see that as we come back from this commercial. Quarter action in Morgantown, Mike. Thank you, John Sanders. As you see, time remaining still early in the fourth quarter. And what has turned out to be a beautiful day in Morgantown in terms of weather, in terms of Mountaineer football, it has been an ugly day. Well, except for a half hour or so of uh, the weather's been perfect, but we sure had an awful way to start this football game. Now watch him eat up the clock. Trucker Miller still in the game. This time to Oxidine. Oxidine has some room outside. Cuts inside. He's still going. Tackled from behind at the 18 by Van Washington. Oxidine just the sophomore. There's a penalty flag, though, on the play. And it's going to go against Virginia Tech, so they'll bring it back. I think we're getting a lot of holding calls on wide receivers as they keeping players out of the football game. And so I see of the flag coming late. And that's usually what happens. So this will negate. Illegal block above the waist and in the back. A 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Negates a 25-yard pickup. There's the bottom left yeah. side of your screen is the penalty. You know, it's kind of a tough thing to call because your, your defender is turning on the man as he makes the block. And those things are very, very questionable because you don't know what you can do. But he can't get off the thing. You can see he wasn't violent on the play. So they mark it at 30, just inside the 35. Oxendine tries to get away and does. Now cuts back. Run out of bounds. Terry Severin once again. He's come out here in the second half, made a bunch of tackles. Still plenty of time remaining in what has been a long, long afternoon for West Virginia in the defense. Not because they haven't played well, because they've been on the field all day. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's amazing. The score is 24 to nothing with all the attempts. And you can't imagine how many plays that Virginia Tech has run versus how many plays West Virginia. Marcus Parker gets perhaps two yards on the first down run. J.T. Thomas on the stop. Now, what the West Virginia stands fans are watching on TV or in the stands here should know that there is a lot of football players at West Virginia that don't ever give up. And that's something that you should be admiring and cheering for and helping them stay even when it's down 24 nothing. JT Thomas, or any one of these fellas, stay right in the game and play. That's a lot of credit to them. Well, guys like Thomas, they don't know how to play any other way, that's for sure. Second down and eight. Breaks more tackles than he has the first down as he rambles down to the 15-yard line. Boy, he is one impressive back. He's going to take over when Thomas leaves. He came into the game averaging over six yards per carry. He is sensational. I think it's nice to have Thomas in there, then Oxendine, Thomas in there. Then you come back with the fullbacks that they have. Uh, we've said before and want to say again, the fullbacks they have playing, you just can't get too many more better than that and I think it's part of their success they're able to control the football like they do he missed the first two games of the year with a broken bone in his right hand but is still the team's second leading rusher did he come back against Miami though he made a big difference several long runs absolutely has a hole here and 
Gets inside the 10 down to the seven yard line. Bernard Russ makes the stop. No, you're sitting with the football team that's going to be six, six wins in a row. Holding offense. That one comes back again. And Tech has been played by penalties. Second worst in the conference in terms of penalty yards per game. Holding offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Now we were saying before this will be their sixth win in the row, but I can remember we covered this as a Big East Network when there was zero and two, and we asked him the question, uh, what do you have to do to get this football team well? He says, win today against Miami, and that'll be the best one that we can have. And sure enough, with a sold-out crowd, they beat Miami for the first time in their history. It's been undefeated ever since. They're playing like an undefeated team, and they're leading the, uh, the Big East in a lot of areas. And they're going to be tough to beat down the hall. It'll be a big game next week when they play Syracuse. Chuck Miller fires. Nice catch from Still. But quickly brought down by Beasley. You know, that Miami game, they won a 13-7. Game wasn't over to the final play when a pass was deflected in the end zone because the Hurricanes were driving down the field. Now, you've got to watch a tremendous executed play by your quarterback, Drunken Miller, because he's getting bomb bombs. He's got pressure right in his face. Great throw, great catch. Another bootleg action. Chuck Miller throws, almost picked off. There's Aaron Beasley right there. I tell you, I don't know of a more aggressive ball hawk and defensive back in football than Aaron Beasley. Uh, you have to admire the way he plays. He's got great courage to the ball and tremendous confidence in how he plays people. The senior from Pottstown, Pennsylvania is going to make somebody happy in the NFL next year. It's going to be disappointing for him to, to be part of a team that uh, you know, it's, it's just hard to play. But you got to admire him the way they wait play and not being able to win more games. Third field, down. Field for yep. Third and 12. The screen to Oxendine. Able to hold on. He can't go anywhere. As he's quickly brought down. Odell Tucker on the tackle. Now again. You're talking about Aaron Beasley, big tackle, number 71, pulls out there to try to blow him out of the thing, and Beasley just takes him on and keeps the play, squeezed down from the outside to allow 56 Tucker come over and make the play. And uh, just great defense, and people don't understand the coordination that goes with it, and, and uh, some of us appreciate it so, and I hope everybody does appreciate the effort that goes into all these great plays by football players across the land. Adel Larson, a 39-yard attempt. Floats this one up and just gets over. We know his distance at least. <laughs> we know his distance. So Larson's wow. second field goal of the afternoon. You know, it's just amazing the swing that he has. He kicks him out of the end zone on the kickoff and just, a, just boots it over. Virginia Tech dominating this afternoon. The Tokies on their way to their sixth straight win. And also, they have yet to lose on the road this year. They hold on today. They'll be 4-0 on the road. And they just added to their points. Adel Larson, a 39-yard field goal, but not by much. When, they, when things are going your way, they go your way. Look at that flag with the wind on it. But it just <laughs> clears the thing. And uh, the young man from wherever he's from, he's got it going today. But we saw him suffer early in the year. Well, Larson's from Norway, so. Is that where he's from? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, he should enjoy this cold weather at least. <laughs> it isn't cold weather that's bothering him. He also had a 43-yard field goal to kick off the scoring of the first. Virginia Tech also has Wayne Thomas on an 8-yard touchdown run. Larry Green on a 38-yard interception return. Drucken, Miller, and Jennings hooked up from 37 yards out. They have dominated this afternoon. There it is in the end zone. Same area right in the end. Sean Foreman had thoughts, but wisely says no. And West Virginia will take over at their own 20. It's very obvious that he has a leg a little bit stronger than he's kicking. Yeah. Very obvious that he needs a little bit more confidence in letting it follow through and kicking it right. And there you see the latest scoring drive, courtesy of some excellent field position. Nine plays, 21 yards. That's what you call clock eating offense. And again, Eric Boykin, a backup quarterback, the junior from Dayton. Is on for Chad Johnson. 
Now let's see. Earlier here on the board. Now he's got the field position. See if uh, Coach Needle would open it up now and start trying to move the football field with the pass offense. Play fake from Boykin. Quick throw. Complete to Leroy White. White's got the first down and more across the 40. And it slides up to about the 45 yard line. Cornell Brown comes around to make the stop. You know, Mac McCulty is sitting out there at wide receiver and doing a great job blocking, which allowed the play to go further. Fullback is wide open on the football play. Great call off the counter bootleg. And a 25 yard pickup for Leroy White. Good pursuit from Brown to track down the tackle. So first and ten. Amazing the speed of that defensive front. They're just shy of their own 45. Boykin again to throw. Fires complete to David Saunders. And he's hit at the 42 yard line by Larry Green, 42 yard line of Virginia Tech. The pressure on Eric Boykin is just amazing. They're able to get that thing off and complete it. I'll tell you, the Tech defensive line, they've got to be tired from being in the backfield no, no, so much. No, no. no? no when, when you get to the quarterback, you want to play all day. No, no, they don't get tired for something like that. They love it. So when they're playing, they can't get anywhere and you're tired. Fortunate. They can run now. Curtis Keith quickly hit by Jimmy Barron. And a fumble. Let's see if they call it still Tech ball. Or check that now near ball. And yes, it will stay with West Virginia. Barron trying to plead his case. Curtis Keaton, a freshman, had to learn to respect the ball. At first down, we don't have to reach further and get a half a yard. Put it in trouble, let the official call the thing. Well, he certainly dropped yeah. it. Barron stripped that's it. That's right. <laughs> Keaton somehow holds on. I don't know if that's strong possession, but it's still West Virginia football. The whistle was blown. We heard the whistle. Blown. That's why they kept it. Play fake again. Boykin. With the throw, nearly picked off. Matt McCulty helped make sure Antonio Banks couldn't come up with the interception. Okay. The young man made a great block, and now as a wide receiver, if I throw it to you and you can't get it, make sure nobody else catches it. And that's a great example of that because a lousy thrown ball by Boykin here. Very wobbly. And right at the defender. Yep. And McNulty made sure he didn't get it. Tough situation for Boykin to come in. Your team getting blown out. Kind of a chilly day. And all of a sudden, you got to come in and perform. But that's what a backup quarterback needs to do. Third and 14. Boykin under pressure. And he is taken by George Del Rico. Another sack for the Virginia Tech defense. Waverly Jackson. There's so many people on the sack. There's so much pressure by the people. It's, uh, you know, it's one of these games that you can see now why Coach Nealon didn't want to throw the football a lot because he knew that they couldn't stand up from the pressure and didn't want to you know, just get out of his football team into trouble. He had to stay close, try to win in the fourth quarter. So Don Nealon, West Virginia. Don Nealon calls timeout. Just under five and a half to play. Most of the crowd here at Mountaineer Field now heading for the exits. Virginia Tech has dominated. It was 17-0 at halftime. The two quick scores early in the second quarter turned it around, especially that interception by Larry Green. He returned it 38 yards for a touchdown. And West Virginia still looking for their first points in quite some time. They were blanked last week. And what do they have ahead? Let's take a look for Virginia Tech. Still some tough games and none tougher. Well, it's the next big, week. Yeah. That's down in Blacksburg. It's going to be on ABC, I think. That's good for them at 3.30. So Not good for us, good for them. Syracuse still in first place in the Big East. Well, they are, they are playing today. So. But they'll certainly be looking forward to this game, and I am guarantee a lot of them are watching this right now. And it's going to help the coaching staff at Syracuse to get ready because they, they know that Virginia Tech's a good football team. Now West Virginia, no room for error the rest of the way. Yeah, no bad. Certainly two winnable home games, but they're going to have to come up with a huge win down in Miami. Now they hear that Rutgers is uh, having a big game against Pitt this afternoon. So this has not been a good uh, good afternoon for West Virginia in any way. They've got to get out and play Rutgers coming off a thing. and they got Pittsburgh left was getting better, and Miami's trying to climb out of the outhouse back to the penthouse where they started. Easy. Boykin another play fake. Boykin again under pressure. And he runs out of bounds. Tony Morrison right there. Just shy of midfield. And that was a fourth down play, so Virginia Tech will take over. 
tough afternoon for Boykin and the Mountaineers. Well, maybe the homecoming parties tonight with the parents will... Uh, no. No, no chance. Huh? No. Put on extra police. It's a very, very sad day in Morgantown. Don't forget, it's the rivalry of Virginia Tech that's here. They don't like to lose to those Davis. This is not a happy, happy camp anyplace by the players, coaches, or anything. Congratulations to you, Virginia Tech. Wonderful victory out of your own backyard. Al Clark, the freshman out of Washington, D.C., the backup quarterback, sees his first action this afternoon. Clark hands off to Oxendine, who gets down to the 39-yard line. Charlton Forbes, the tackle. So, a lot of the reserves getting a chance here down the stretch in what has turned into a blowout victory for Virginia Tech. There's Clark, 6'1", 195, again the freshman. There you see the numbers in terms of passing. Also runs the ball extremely well. He's averaging 10 and a half yards per rush. He's got two TD runs this year, 48 and 58 yards. That happened in the blowout against Akron. Take a look at him in person. He's a, just a great, big, strong guy. Oxidine fumbles. I think it was an exchange thing. He never did get the football. Uh, I think there's a coordination problem between he and the way it looked to me, uh, Mike, that uh, yeah. he never did get the thing. It was put on his hip, and he's got to, Al's got to look that thing in a little bit more. Oh, yeah. He had it in there. Yeah, Oxidine should have had that one. Oxidine's looking downfield instead of coming to the ball. It's his fault, not the quarterback's. Third and three for Virginia Tech. Certainly a coaching staff likes to give him a chance to get his feet wet a little bit here and there. Well, I think they want to just run the football, keep the clock going here, try to get your first down. Oxidine it, does get it easily yeah. as he rambles down to the 33-yard line. Jason Williams with the tackle. Oxendine now with 72 yards on the day on just 11 carries. Clark getting the signals from the side. They're going to the shotgun here, but I, yeah, they're shifting out of it. I think that they're going to keep the clock running and down on the field. Go home with that 27 nothing. Oxendine manages to get down to the 29-yard line as they're just running out the clock. Bob Brown on the stop. So a second and six coming up. Three minutes, 15 seconds and counting. And what has been another impressive victory for the Virginia Tech Hokies. They will improve to 4-0 on the road this season. Those first two losses to BC and to Cincinnati, both at home. They had to come up with road wins, and they did so. Well, the way you win is to stay well, the healthy, the same team that I saw a long time ago is completely intact, and that makes a lot of difference. There's Clark's running ability as he gets down to the 10-yard line. Sean Foreman finally brings him down, but Clark, excellent running the football. 19-yard pickup. Gives him an added dimension when he's in there. Certainly, Druckenmiller, a terrific passer, but not known for his running, although he, he looked pretty good scrambling today. Again, it's the uh, weak side option football play that's that's been there, and I think that uh, they'll see that Al Clark can run a real good football play from that thing. Oxen dying straight up the middle quickly hit and thrown back going nowhere now the challenge right now is for West Virginia to keep him out of the end zone it's a real solid ground attack bunch up play everybody in the box and go right after him keep him out of the end zone that's what we should do here but from a sportsmanship standpoint you've got to admire Frank Beamer and his staff they've got the victory there's no embarrassment here it's a conference team a very very bitter rivalry but done the correct way we're coming right after you straight ahead you keep us out we're coming we're trying to get in so much of the other alternative we've seen so many coaches run up to score this year not very many teams in the East do that no Mark hands off and Parker gets down to the two Randy Fulmer on the stop. So it'll be third and goal from the two. 27-0 Virginia Tech in control. It's going to be
be a pleasant trip home to Blacksburg. Anytime you win, it's a pleasant trip home, especially a big game like this, a conference opponent. We're actually putting West Virginia in, in, in trouble conference-wise with two, two losses, staying with one. Great win over Miami. Uh, exciting week of practice, getting ready for a strong first place Syracuse team coming in. And nowhere to go for Parker that time. As the West Virginia now defense the clock becomes the worst enemy. They're trying to keep him out. It's down to 44 seconds. And the crowd is responding. Steve Ford with the tackle. Virginia Tech crowd is saying get in. West Virginia crowd staying here, staying get out. So let's see if they get another playoff. Fourth and goal at the two. There you see your time winding down. No need to get another playoff, really. You know, Frank Beamer has got his own son on the football team, but this is how you can show a lot of people that, you know, you get the victory and you don't want to embarrass anybody. Yeah, they're going to let the play pilot. Excuse me, Dick. They're going to let the play clock wind out and get the, the penalty. Play the game. Offense. Hey, right now, we're going to take a look at our Ford player of the game. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Today's player of the game, Cornell Brown. Number 58. A couple of sacks. Eight tackles as the defense really the story today for Virginia Tech. He's, he has a brother that I believe that played at Pitt and was a number one draft choice and an outstanding offensive tackle. And Ruben. Yep. Yeah, you talk about uh, genes and lineage. There's another one. And this will be the final play for another impressive win for Virginia Tech. Clark kicks out to Oxendine. And Oxendine brought down as the clock ticks out. And that one will do it. Virginia Tech has their first six-game winning streak since 1967. The Hokies have won six in a row. They are now 4-0 on the road. And 6-2 and on the season is two very highly respected coaches. Yeah. High emotion for Virginia Tech. They defeat West Virginia 27 0 here in Morgantown. Right now, let's go to our Big E studios and John Sanders. Hi, thanks to Mike Breen, Dick McPherson for their coverage of the game today at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. It is homecoming there, and certainly not a happy homecoming for all of the alumni coming back because they see West Virginia shut out now for the second week in a row. They were shut out at Syracuse. Then they come home with a lot on the line against Virginia Tech this afternoon. Tech has won six in a row. They are 4-0 on the road, setting up a big game, a huge game next week in the Big East. They get a chance to play for a tie at the top of the conference standings because they will be hosting Syracuse University next Saturday afternoon in Blacksburg. That is a tremendous game, and they have defeated West Virginia, their arch rival, for the second consecutive year. So a tremendous afternoon for Virginia Tech. They led from the beginning. They took the opening kickoff. They had all the field position in the first half. As you recall, the Mountaineers did not even pick up a first down in the first quarter of play. They were a minus 13 yards offensively in that opening quarter. They did pick it up a little bit. They had some chances in the second quarter, could not capitalize, could not get it in because the Tech defense was just too much. The Hokies have defeated the Mountaineers. We have scores and highlights from around the country. We'll continue.